Hey, let's start the show. It's November 21st, 2012. Welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. I'm Will Smith. Joining me today, Norman Chan. Hello. How are you doing, Mr. Chan? It's, it's quite quiet in this room. It's it's usually really quiet in here because there's usually like three or four people here. And now there's only three. And and we're all sitting here talking to you. Uh, Gary Whittem. Hello. Happy day before Thanksgiving, sir. Yes, I'm, I'm very much in the holiday mood. You can kind of tell it's the holidays starting around here. Everyone's already cleared out, right? Fe- I got street parking that was free today. Love it. Yeah, uh, ha- this is my favorite time of the year. I the th- really the Thanksgiving well, all Christmas of it, window, but everything from what now up until it starts Halloween. Okay, because I love the. I think I've talked about this before. I love that all three of those holidays just kind of ha- Halloween the rolls trifecta. into Thanksgiving, back to rolls back to into back. Christmas. It yeah. gives you enough time in between to rest, recuperate, and then yeah. prepare. I just love it all. I, I love this whole two month window. Thanksgiving is my favorite. I love Thanksgiving because I love. But then you also hate New Year. I don't. I, I. I don't hate it. I just don't care about it. Oh, so once you're done with Christmas, that's it. Then you go to hibernation. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I like the fact that you're still kind of technically off. You don't have to go back to work yet, but like New Year's is not. That's a, the New Year's is a thing for young people. We're young people. We're no, young. Not, not in a few months. <laughs> oh boy, we're really not. Um, I just love Thanksgiving because it, it's the time where. You, you do whatever you, you, you do. You do the thing you want, right? You want to eat turkey and you want to eat stuffing and you want to eat gravy you and you want it. to sit and watch the lions get the shit kicked out of them on it's, on Thursday it's afternoon. Very American, yeah. yeah. It's it's the greatest of American holidays. And of course, you know, an opportunity to be thankful. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> no, no. I mean, the, the, no. The, it's an opportunity to indulge in, in, in all your indulgences. The yes. only thing that annoys me about Thanksgiving is that it's followed immediately. By Black Friday, which is, I think, well, the now worst day they've of the overlapped. Year. I mean, it's outrageous what's happening. I, it's, it's I started already. I'm boycotting. I'm boycotting companies you, that make their people bold. come in on Thursday. How bold. Mike Krulik from uh, Penny Arcade has posted about this uh, in the last week. I don't know if you saw that, but he used to uh, be a, a store clerk. Yeah. And he used to work those holidays. Yeah, it's horrible. My, my attitude, when I first, people are complaining, oh my God, it's terrible now. Black Friday goes into Thanksgiving and, you know, people are just leaving immediately after Thanksgiving dinner or even boycotting it altogether, just go stand in line for a cheap that's you know, fucking stereo or crazy something. and my attitude initially was like yeah but you know you don't if you don't want to do that don't do it like people want to that's their choice but it's not the choice for retail employees yeah they get stuck with this with well, this stuff and those kids the kids of those assholes that are camped out in front of best buy right now and are going to be eating turkey from a can tomorrow morning i mean that's that's real sad yeah you're, it's you're like and the thing is, the deals aren't even that good. Look, the retailers have wised up to Black Friday. There's, you're not getting, you're getting LG class TVs. You're not getting an LG 55 inch TV. Yeah, I mean, look, for the, the, the ship has sailed on consumerism taking over the holidays. It is what it is. We get that, but it has, it has, it is now getting to a point where, do, do you all, are you also offended by people who wait in line for Thanksgiving free tur- Thanksgiving turkeys? No, that's a little different. No, those are things oh, that they, people actually okay, really right. need. <laughs> okay, but. And we invite like, needy and homeless I, I think, people into our house for Thanksgiving. I, 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 th- I think that a lot of people, black, I mean, aside from the people uh, door busting, their their deal. Well, the most had. yes, yeah. but at what cost? But the door, well, the, the, you don't the, need to door bust. One, uh, the most depressing thing from as much as I like the holidays, those videos that come out on Friday and Saturday of people getting trampled and. It, and it really is like the end of the world. Well, like, you, like you'd think that so, like the president had just gone on TV and said, ladies and gentlemen, the world will be ending in 30 minutes. It's the mist. As right. opposed to, ladies and gentlemen, you can get $20 off this <laughs> product that yeah. you not, otherwise would not have had much interest in. So, so the thing I always wonder is if the retail dudes that are working at the front door at Target or Best Buy or whatever, if one of them, if they have to draw straws to see who goes up and does the, does the unlocking... Because you know they unlock it, and the moment that lock clicks, it's just a fucking there must be crazy a better system. push. Yeah, of course, there, there must be a better system of of a, like a barricade or some type of gate mechanism. That you it can really, I mean, we joke about it, but it really does depress me. I mean, to, it, it is. It's to terrible. be clear, I, I mean, and to be clear. I, I have waited in lines for products before. Yes, but I waited in lines for Android tablets, yeah, and I, I, iPhones, I waited, I waited and in line iPads. for the Wii, for iPhones, but in an orderly line. 
I don't mind waiting in line. It's the stampede that is. Yeah. In, that See, I, I'm offended by the waiting in line too. But but that's at least that's civilized. There's a system. Mm. And, and I it's very English. I think most of us have sworn off the hunt for Black Friday deals. Well, but, I'm doing... But there are... Every year, it inevitably comes up where... But this know, is why I like... A, a the, week later. But this is why the internet part of it is so great. Not yeah. just Cyber Monday. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Amazon's already started. Like, I got a link the other day. Don't say I, Cyber Monday. Like, Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. Cyber, Cyber, Cyber Monday. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I've, I've been very interested in this show, Homeland, but I don't have Showtime, and there's no way to, for me to get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's the, here's the Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray has been very expensive, but it was, it was marked down to, like, some ridiculously, like, 70% off. Oh, is that still on? Click. There, and now I feel like I've got... I, I participated in the, in the holiday bargain season. Well... But, so, so, uh, but I don't need to, to sacrifice my dignity to get the, there. Reach the black. So we're... Get we're out the red. What are you talking about? You no, know, that's Black Friday. It's because oh. it's when retailers and, and the balance sheets get into the black, not out of that's the red. That's not really true, though. That's why it's called Black Friday. It's, but no. No. No, it's called Black Friday it's called black because Friday it's a it's terrible, it's terrible yeah. day. It's a dark day. No. If they yes. operated for 11 months a year without making yeah. a profit, it sta- do you think that there's a single retail location that would be open in the United States the, the today? The term Black Friday started as kind of like an ironic joke, and it's, it just, it's just stuck. It's now been a I got this up. Macy's like say, like, come Tuesday. to Black Friday. I always thought the Black Friday was the day when... Was the day was this beginning no. of the season when people and retailers would get to sell no. all no, the no. I think I, no, I mean I think it started with like it was associated with stock market crashes. Right? Yeah, it's it's a it's a reference to Black like, Tuesday, like the Black 19, Plague thir- and 1919 stock market crash. Yeah, um, origin of the term. Okay. okay, wow, lots of context. Let's oh watch as God, Norm as, oh, as wait, the wait, internet wait. drops some knowledge on Norm here. Nothing. There's nothing better than watching someone read a Wikipedia page. Yeah. I, Except I, I, for I, 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 listening, listening to, to listening someone to read, me read it. Wikipedia, Wikipedia Yeah, page. I want to get this right. No, it's called Black Friday because it's awful. Yeah. That's to, why. To be, so, well, the you first thought, it was, you thought it was about getting in the black? Yeah. No. This is this is one of those things. Sometimes Norm think get, get wow. things a little wrong. This is like homogenous milk. Yeah. It all comes from one cow. It's single origin. Yeah. Um, the oh, it's associated with the financial crisis of 1869. There you go. In 19th century. There so wow, I'm actually in the market for Black Friday deals this year for the first time in a really long Internet time. Internet deals though, because I I've got a bunch yeah, of baby, baby shit. shit to buy, and it turns out most baby stuff never goes on sale. But Black well, Friday well, is well, you the know, one exception. You know what you, you know if you put Gina's due date into like the Amazon system or whatever, in the final month you get discounts on everything. Really? You have to do that. Pro tip. Yeah. Pro well, we tip. just did the, the Amazon registry the other day. Okay. So m- make sure you put in her due date because in the last 30 days, you'll see the price. They'll start dropping prices. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So then why would you buy anything early? Uh, that's a, Well, you don't. You wait for the last 30 days and then you get it. Secrets dropped on this is only a test. Yeah. You do need to buy a lot of baby stuff and this is a good opportunity to get stuff. Yeah. Is, but is, are there baby deals to be had? There are dope baby deals. on Mostly on the high dollar items. So stuff like the stroller right. and um, and uh, car seats and all wow, that You want to be making those savings. Yeah. Norm's well, I, I read more of the excited. Wikipedia page underneath Norm's the origin of the term. Is there was an accounting pra- practice. Many merchants objected to the negative use of the term to refer to one of the most important shopping days of the year by the early 1980s. An alternative theory, 80s when I was born. So this is this is the theory I was no, raised. Justifying with your, your dopey, an alternative your dopey theory can be circulated theory? that retailers traditionally operated at a financial loss for most of the year and made their profit during the holiday season. Then why stay open for the rest of the year? To, if they're not making money for the first eleven well, months you of you the know, year, you know, a lot of companies fucking close yeah, the that's doors. Like, that's like being a Christmas tree flow. lot that yeah. stays open all year round. Yeah, I'm going to open my twenty-four, it's like my, my three hundred and sixty-five day. You know, you know, a lot of companies don't actually make, they have operating losses, but they still operate. I understand. That's 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 the idea. This is a good reason you're a journalist and not in business. Yeah. Anyway, you, um, you, a lot of companies. So, but I mean, even on the internet, like when, when Amazon has those gold box things that are only open for like an hour or whatever, yeah. they go, you still have to. I mean, it's not as undignified as, as trampling. You have to refresh to a death, lot. But you have, yeah, you're hammering away on that mouse click to, to get those deals before they all run you out. You don't want those deals that are limited time or like random time. Like the worst thing. But do. Amazon's good about it because they will advertise the schedule for the day. They'll say, if you want this at this price, come back at like, you know, 2 p.m. Yes, or n- not the at two random times throughout the weekend. Keep on checking and we might let you save an extra couple hundred bucks. Yeah. So we're going to talk about tech stories. We'll talk about Thanksgiving later, I'm sure. Well, I mean, Black Friday is, in, in a way, is it's a tech the biggest. story. Because it's do you ever electronics and gadgets. I mean, that's a big part of... Um, it's 
where those things. You know, sold. it's not actually the biggest shopping day of the year. It's the biggest shopping of the day of the year so far. The biggest shopping day of the year is the Saturday before Christmas. Always. Right. Because people are, are getting last it's minute the last gifts. minute gifts day. Is yeah. that con- quantity or Do- item dollar, dollar volume, volume. Is, okay. the, is, the, is the only thing that matters, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, but basically, pretty much any, as we discovered the other day, any time from like last weekend to now. Yeah. D- any kind of high shopping area like a mall or like a downtown shopping like Union Square here in San Francisco, it, it all bets are off at this point. Well, and it's ugly. The people who do the statistical analysis on sale prices say that the best time to shop is actually the week after Thanksgiving mm. or the week before Christmas. They're about roughly equivalent. I kind of like it. I mean, I know it's a consumeristic thing, but it is part of what, what is now our modern holiday tradition. I like going downtown, getting a, getting a, a, a holiday-spiced... A pink coffee berry? beverage. Oh God! Um, and <laughs> I'm uh, glad that you called it a coffee flavored beverage. Like it's lame, but like when like Leah says to me the day, oh Starbucks, the red the red cups are out at Starbucks, which is like that's just, it's another Did little they, harbinger of the holiday season. They stopped the pumpkin spice lattes. Did they? They, they I don't them. care about that. I it's, like the gingerbread. For the, the gingerbread latte. The gingerbread is where it's at. And the, the candy cane. Um, just two short months ago, you were so excited about the pumpkin spice lattes, and already. Yeah. No, not Thank me. Goodness. I don't like pumpkin. Thank Lee, goodness. You don't like pumpkin? pumpkin. I like ginger. You don't like pumpkin? I don't like pumpkin, pumpkin pie? flavor. I like gingerbread flavor. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and man. I don't like pumpkin pie. Oh. I don't oh. like cranberry sauce either. What, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Maybe this is one of like peanut I like, butter. I like pecan, like I like butter. pecan pie. Pecan I'm pie. not making any favorite. pecan pies. Pecan pie is great. Pecan pie you didn't give me this information in time to buy pecans. Are you making pumpkin pies? Yeah, I make pies from scratch. But are they just all pumpkin pies? There's no Pumpkin and apple. I guess I'll have an apple. Uh, okay. <laughs> I like cherry pie and I like don't, pecan don't pie. I don't and I like scary. all kinds of chocolate cream pies and banana mm. cream pies. Well, those aren't really Thanksgiving either. Well, Leah's making that Guinness chocolate She's cake. So I'll this, just eat the, that. I thought she was making a stout cake for a minute there. Stout. It's a kind of weasel. The Auto stout. correct. Goodness. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Should we get into some t- well, some festive tech? Do news? people actually buy cars? In the holidays, is, is oh, well, I mean, you know, they, we see so many I, I, I think they must because there are so many like they're, holiday car sales events. I can't wait for the first Lexus December to Remember event. Oh, because the bow, you love the bow, <laughs> yeah, for the super the super Franklin rich bow. Romneys types of the world. Oh, hello, darling. Here's your Lexus for Christmas because I'm so fucking rich. Otherwise, they won't. Your family won't love you. That's right. Um, I think people, I think like like washing machines and beds and everything. There's a time of year that the that the model year rolls over, and if you, like the reason holiday sales exist is because you want to hit that right. Is when that when holidays new, roll in the over? US, when do the new model years? I don't come have any. Out? I used to it used to be like in September. the UK. It's like it's yeah, it's like in the fall, but yeah, I don't but know when it is. Well, here the big in the car US. days for like Labor Day. Um, not July Fourth, maybe July Fourth. But they usually have separate a holiday a car a car lots. Usually have separate clearance events, clearance events for right before the new models come yes, in, right? right? So that's yeah. and that's not associated with. Well, and holidays. then they probably have something later where they want to run out the last of the old inventory, the last of last year's inventory. Like right. if they don't get rid of it when the new cars come in, they also want to like. Yes. I don't know. I feel like car dealerships probably have. I don't plenty of. It's hard. To it's hard sales. to imagine. You know, an iPad or a Wii U or something is one thing, but that's like it's hard. But like, how many people are really giving cars for gifts? Like that, you, you've got to well, be new in cars, the, especially. Yeah, yeah like you've you might give be, a sixteen-year-old a car. You've got to be the one percent of the one percent to be doing that. Don't buy Corollas and, and don't and don't, don't give Even a kid then. a new car. Never give a kid a new car. No. Like that's the only time car gifts are acceptable. I think you're not going to give your kid a new car. Fuck no, I'm not going to give my kid a car. <laughs> Make my kid take the bus. <laughs> Good all like a chud, kid. Yeah. Oh. Well, you gotta learn how the chuds live. Yeah, chain them before. to a tree too. Uh, I'll give him an Uber account, just in case. Wow, Uber might not be around by then. Well, you want to talk sense. about that? Uh, we won't talk about that. Um, Last thing for shopping, uh, Wirecut is a really good article of things. Uh, the online Black Friday weekend Cyber Monday deals that they would buy. And some of those things. Is there good. a good resource for like where the like a one stop resource that's where the I'm deals saying. are? Why cut it? Okay. Why cut it? Well, not no, not not for deals, but for what to buy. So the, but the I already uh, know what I want to buy. I'm just looking for for discounts. Oh, there, there are sites that you. Don't I don't need visit. to be told what to buy. Fat wallet and stuff like that. Well, the thing. So the thing about wire cutter that's good. I can't go on those fat wallet slick deal sites. They they, they depress me. <laughs> Those people. Two, I mean, it is like two, extreme two percent coupon. cash back and one percent the pores. One percent rebate. You say those people. Is that what you mean? Am I going to have to bleep you again? I love the idea of poor as a noun. Somebody, <laughs> I said there, there was some product that I wanted the other day, but I didn't want to go get it. Oh, it was a Wii U. I, I didn't want to have to go get one. And somebody said, just pay a poor to go do it for you. <laughs> like, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. It is terrible. But oh, people do really do bad. it. 
Well, I mean, when we were in line for the iPad, the people in the front of the line were placeholders that had been paid to stay there. Yeah, all night. I think that's that's disgusting. Yeah, it's pretty gross. <sighs> I mean, at least they're, they're I don't even like jobs like some, for America. Occasionally, when I occasionally when I fly someplace and there's like a guy waiting for me, you know, with my name on the card thing, Ooh. I won't even let them carry my bag because no. I'm I'm comfortable with people doing things for me. I'm like I got it. It's just it's a small not like bag. you roll heavy anyway. You have a no. you have a two two. But even if I have like a big suitcase of I don't the idea of someone some other guy whose job it is just to carry my shit is just well, weird to me. So in Gina's old job, we used to go places and she would have to check a whole bunch of bags that were like shit for what the whatever event she was going to so in that case we would let them haul the bag but I usually guess. i carry my own bag i mean when the when the guy when the bell guy at the hotel comes down with that big cart thing that you throw the yeah. bags onto that's well that's and you tip enough. him he yeah. gets a tip at the end that says hey in exchange for the time that you've spent here is twenty dollars yeah. or ten dollars or two to two bucks a bag whatever you three bucks a bag. I, don't, I don't know what the 20 rolls right of paper is. towels for 20 bucks that's that's a bucket roll. It's a pretty good deal. Hmm. Uh, math checks out. Um, wire cutters. The problem the problem I have with with the Black Friday is you get in there and you've waited in line for so long and it's four o'clock in the morning and you're probably all hopped up on turkey and white wine still. So when you get into the store at that point, you're just looking for deals and Wait, not looking for shit you actually. Are you speaking need. from experience? Here? You've never actually done this. My father. You? My father okay. used to go when I was a kid. Okay. It wasn't as bad then. Um, you want a list of Sith of a hierarchy of things you that's the thing. need you, slash want. So when people slash that's kind the of thing. Want. When people the, the the hardcore Black Friday guys, the people that are right there at the front of the door, the people that are in line rush, right now. Those people know what they want, right? They're not well, they're there for, for a deals. They, they, they know, know what, deal what the deals are. They know yes. exactly what section Correct. they're going to, right. what products they're going to get. Right? They've got a plan. Therefore, they're there for the thing that is limit two per store. Right. So, oh. you know. Then that's fine. I got no beef with them. I think it's right. crazy to wait four days in line, but but if you if you're the twentieth <laughs> person in line, well, I, I mean, I think they're crazy. Okay, but that's their choice and it's their life. And as long as they're not dragging their kids out, I don't give a shit. Um, the problem is if you don't get the doorbuster, then you're walking around just looking for deals, and that's how you end up walking out with a margarita. Yeah, shop, yeah with a thing that you never useless. you never even yeah. wanted. Yeah, it's, exactly. But, but it's twenty percent off. Yeah, uh, yeah, twenty percent off of a margarita bill is still a flaming piece of shit that you don't need. Yeah. And is that the actual is that the actual, Is yeah. that the official Jimmy Buffett licensed one? Yeah. It, there's a South, That's a South Park about that. South Park episode about okay. it. Yeah. to turn it. And the, it was the, the debt crisis was the was, <laughs> it, 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 they explained the debt crisis with margaritavilles. If you've never seen that episode it is definitely worth okay, watching. Okay, I'll be sure to check that out. No, um, I, I definitely I definitely stay to um, the internet so, side. So I think we talked about uh, the Romney tech team and the Orca Thing oh, did you talk? Oh, I, I, bummed, I missed that because I would. I, I, found, I found that fascinating. I would love to have talked we, about. We that. did not talk. about Oh well, then let's oh, do it. Okay. I thought can we I, talked about it. Can I summarize it? Because yeah, run it down. Um, I read a couple of stories about this. Obviously, Mitt Romney lost the election for many reasons. He went to Disneyland this weekend. Or this did he? Past week, yeah. Disneyland's for winners. I heard he went to see the new Twilight movie as well. Well. Disneyland is Things for winners. you do when you don't have to run a country. Mitt Romney, you've just spectacularly lost the election. What are you going to do next? I'm, I'm going to Disneyland. I'm going to, I'm going to Disney. Not hey, very far. it's good farm. for his family. I mean, look. That, I mean, that would cheer you up, right? I mean, he's, I'm sure he's bummed. He didn't look cheery. You saw the photos? Mitt Romney p- p- uh, pumping gas. Also you know, not cheery. Look, I, I don't like Mitt Romney, but I do. And it's a good thing for the country and for the world that he didn't win. But Oh, God. <laughs> But I, I'm not down with this laughing at pictures of him with his tousled hair or whatever. Let me tell you something. By the way, if it, I would be glad to look like Mitt Romney at age 65. That guy looks fucking good for 65. Well, if you have that kind of money, you should well, look Well, let me tell you something. If I, spent, if I spent the last year of my life, the last six years of my life, being basically constantly having my hair and makeup done and being constantly putting oh, your tie, and you have to choose this tie, and this, this tie has been focus tested and all that bullshit... And suddenly it's all over. Yeah, I'm putting on my fucking Superman sweatpants and pumping some gas. <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> Fair enough. And then going to Disneyland. Fair yeah. enough. And yeah. then going to Disneyland. Disneyland. Right, so okay, but let's that. talk about the tech side of this. Ars Technica actually had a great uh, Politico had a good story, but Ars Technica had a really detailed version of it, as you would expect. And did you read the Atlantic one about what went wrong with the Romney stuff? What went right with Obama stuff? Oh, that was the uh, it was the New York. I read Times. I read it all. I okay. thought it was I found it fascinating to. to, to De- decompose whatever deconstruct deconstruct yeah. all of the decomposing it's the of holidays it. yeah Gary's um, already checked out okay so look basically one of the I don't, I don't think it necessarily would have made much of a difference in the end but it was a big story one of the systems that Romney and the Romney campaign were saying was going to be a great boon to them on election day and would help them win the election was yeah. this very very expensive proprietary 
get out the vote, voter on the ground organization system called ORCA. Right. Uh, uh, Obama had something similar in the 2000... Uh, uh, called 2000, Narwhal. Narwhal. No, the current one is called and Narwhal. They, 2000, yeah. The 2012 one was called, Nar, is called Narwhal, and it was a system, and the ORCA is a natural predator of right. the Narwhal. Right, and so, and so Romney and a, a few people said, oh, we're calling ours Orca because orcas and was, eat narwhals. And the, but the point of this is that they could pull in real time uh, uh, exit poll data. It was a huge and custom then, piece and of then software. Send people out on the streets and people on the to pe get people to go vote. People whose job it was to monitor polls and get people to the polls and give them real time information. All had right. apps on a phone, and the data would come into the system, and they would have this amazing real time fluid snapshot of what oh, we need more people here or you know we right. need to make sure these people are motivated or whatever it was so they could totally like data driven election. maximize all their resources right. on election yes. day. and it, an orca on the romney side was an app similar to what obama did obama's team did in 2008 right um and but narwhal which went but for obama various did. various reasons the whole system was an absolute catastrophe on election day they hadn't probably tested it hadn't been load tested um, they it hadn't probably been explained to volunteers. They were asking volunteers to print out a 60-page manual the night before the election. A lot of these volunteers are elderly. They don't they don't know from apps. They don't know what's going on. Right. And that, and then so there was the, the system collapsed under the load. Their their ISP at one point shut the whole system down because they thought the data coming in was a DDoS. People didn't the, the 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 passwords and pin codes didn't work for volunteers on the day. Basically, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And so, instead of having this incredibly uh, well managed and micromanaged and f and efficient and c and, and communicative uh, ground operation that was all being controlled from their from their HQ, the way that the Obama organization had, uh, Romney just had the fucking Three Stooges, Keystone cops running around, not knowing what was going on absolute nightmare and a lot of people that could have been better utilized just spent the whole day trying to access this app and right. getting frustrated and imagine basically like you, you know what it's like when an mmo comes out first day and the s servers all go down you can't get online nothing's working but the beta works so well yeah it's basically that except they never even had a beta well so the interesting they didn't thing test it they didn't stress test it the interesting thing that andy pointed out uh andy is our is one of the top men uh fabled and wise um he pointed out that uh, Obama had actually hired a team. And, so, and Narwhal on Obama's side was not an app. It was completely different. It okay. Was, co but the, the it point was, is... He was fighting apples with... with no, and he by, got and the, by the way, Orca on the, on the client side, on the volunteer side, was a web app. So they had people going to the app store trying to find this app because they hadn't probably even told them how to get it. And it was actually just a web app. Right. So the, po the, the, but the difference was, the main difference that Andy, Andy thought was that on one side, Obama hired the CTO from Threadless, who clearly understands how to do build large-scale websites. Right. Um, and then that guy hired a team of people from Twitter and all over the all over big, big, uh, smart internet folks. Right. Who quit their jobs, came to work for the Obama campaign for 13 months, and built this app. Right. Um, Wasn't an app. Uh, okay, build build an application that build the infrastructure. Okay, it was it, it was infrastructure. It is, is it a thing that people use to do something? That that was like a small part of it. Okay, and that was the big diff the fundamental difference. So explain then. It was the well, I, I'm digging it up right now, but the comparison is that Romney's team went for an app to manage resources, and I think and this is what Obama went for a. The, but the upshot is the that the there is maybe a different, and it says something about the campaigns, right? The Obama, the Obama campaign is kind of like the young, trendy campaign where they've got all these kind of like guys that actually get the internet and understand social media. And then you've got the Romney campaign, which is kind of saying like, oh, I guess we should have the, the apps and the interwebs on this campaign and not well, really no, understanding no, 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 it that's, at all. That's a gross simplification because clearly they looked at what Obama did in 20, uh, 20, uh, 2008 right. and said, look, they they had good uh, they they were able to get people to come out because the thing that the thing that everybody realized in two thousand eight was whether people were who, who people intended to vote for didn't mean anything if they didn't actually get out and vote right like so all the early polling and all that stuff is useless if it rains on the day in Ohio right. and voter right. turnout is thirty percent and you and you expect. actually need because this is what happens in those key areas you act in like swing counties or whatever they actually have people that will go and knock on your door they'll show up with a fucking bus right we'll take you to the polls like they will fucking carry you there if they yeah. have to to get your vote and we don't see that here in California where it's not that necessarily that big a deal. Well, we, we're never a swing state, right? I mean, for the local stuff, you know, it's still important. But like, yeah, if you live in if you live in like a swing county in like Ohio or Pennsylvania, yeah, there was probably someone knocking on your door on election day saying, "Let's go to right. the polls." Um, the, and then there were some other things in the Obama 
infrastructure um, that, that were really interesting. For example, they had a, a tool that you could dial into if you were an Obama supporter and would then let you be a, essentially a, a caller to call and run down a script with people who were in contested counties. Right. So you could call up and say, hey, just wanted to call and see what you were doing, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I, I didn't ever actually see what the script was, but... It was something you could. Like, I mean, all of that stuff helped get people out. In voting. principle, you know, the idea these days, you you do need to have organization. You can't just you know run your ads and hope that people will show up. You need a a, a, a GOTV operation. Mm -hmm. And I think Romney, the the campaign in principle, the idea behind it was all sound. It's just that they didn't test the software. It wasn't properly implemented, and it just, and it melted down on the day. Right. We we see we see this with every big launch. The problem is, it's not like with an MMO launch. It's like oh, well, by the second week. Everything will we'll, we'll be up and running. Like you have one day to get yeah. this right. Yeah, it, it's so weird. You're hiring people who are typically working on you know several years' schedules to create a product, whether it's a web service or a, a physical product, tech guys. But here, they're a small fraction of the big political machine, and all that matters is on the one day they help their guy. That it work. It. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's zero margin for error. And and, and if yeah, you, you the, yeah, exactly. That's and even at, and even if you work at 100 percent you might still might not win. Yeah. But you just got to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was it was just interesting. It wasn't like there was zero margin for error, and they would like it worked pretty good, but just not good enough. Like it absolutely collapsed. And again, uh, go to the Ars Technica. I guess if you go to Ars Technica and type in like the Romney as a keyword, it'll, the article will come up. Yeah, the it's Atlantic a fascinating. One. Not just you it's know, really it's not even a political story. It's just a classic example, a really interesting case study in how a system, if not properly tested, can technology can help you, but can also destroy you if you don't properly, you know test it and get it working right so it's an interesting story yeah. uh do you want to talk about 4k tvs well this Why is that, uh, is that tie in into what you had in the news for tv manufacturers are fucked i don't know why you got rid of that um well because i thought that i i you know okay tv tv manufacturers are fucked i Apparently. like it seems like it seems like okay sales across the board for tv manufacturers are down Mm -hmm. They, um, it's something we talked about a long time ago, right? The, the, the HD upgrade followed by the rise of flat panels gave an opportunity to sell a lot of TVs in but a once relatively everyone short period them, of time. What are you going to do? Right. And then, then everybody buys 40 and 50 inch TVs and most people don't have room for more than one 40 or 50 inch TV in their home. Most people. Most people. I know what you're thinking. You're already thinking. It's been two years. It's almost time for another TV. No, I'm not thinking that at all. I mean, my TV is so ridiculous that it's, it's really big. Yeah. Looking back, she's gotten the non-three D model. Well, no. In the in the, well, they didn't no, make good size in non-three D. It's still a good. It's really? still a there good was two D no TV. Uh -uh. But the three D was a whatever premium I paid for the three D was a total waste of money. Right. Well, the point the point is, I played a little bit of three D with Black Ops too. Yeah. It wasn't worth setting up. No. Nah. Um, um. Nope. So I, Sony nope. is Sony is. In, in the effort to kickstart the 4K thing, it seems like, I mean, this is my theory, in the effort to kickstart 4K, where the sets are starting at, what, like 25 grand? Well, that one that I saw at the Sony store in New York was 25 grand. Yeah, so, the, so whether you buy a set or a 4K projector, it seems like it's going to be 20 or 25 grand. Um, Sony is giving free 4K movies to anybody who buys those TVs. Like in what from, format? From Sony as Sony's proprietary How format. Is, is that going to be on a disc? Is that I a, assume it'll be, be delivered digitally. I don't know. Isn't I don't it called know like, it's called, it's called, it, they it, have not. They put a name on it. It's called like Blu-ray Ultra or something. It may just be using a Blu-ray disc and better compression um, and using a, like all 50 gigs on so a So when Blu -ray they say disc. they're giving you free movies, what does that mean exactly? That means they are sending you 4K versions of Sony Pictures movies. Like, what, like forever? I... I it, no, no, it's limited bundle. Yeah. So instead of giving you a demo disc where you get a, a, a sizzle reel, of a Spider Man two trailer, you get a couple movies. I mean, but again, I'm not going to spend. If I'm not going to spend twenty grand on a on a four K TV, the thing that's going to flip me over is not like a half a dozen movies. You don't say. Like, upgrade my entire Blu Ray collection to Blu Ray Mega Extreme or whatever it's called, and, and maybe all we'll my talk. cable shows are yeah. not only 720p or 1080p. But it all comes down to content. And there's no content. I actually wish when I went down to this when I was at that Madison Avenue store, uh, on a Fifth Avenue store, I was looking at that. There was no one there in the little room where they had the 4K TV running. I wish there had been a Sony person there because I wanted to say to them, look, assuming I would want to buy this, what is there for me to watch on it? Because I, I would l honestly like to know what their answer is. Well, so the thing that we saw at CES last year when we saw the first kind of real... I mean, we'd seen 4K TVs before, but this last year was the first time that there were real pro like product products, not yeah. just tech demos. Yeah. The, the scalers that they're running with 4K, upscaling Blu-ray from 1080p, 
um, are like we have a perception that scalers are bad because of the 480. Because when, last time we saw them, they were trying to upscale 480p to 720p or 1080. Um, and and I think that when you have more data to start with, they uh, the results are dramatically better. So with the higher resolution Blu-ray discs, they upscale really well. I I think. And I could be wrong, but I think if you sat next to upscaled 4K, uh, uh, sorry, upscaled 1080p and 4K, you would probably have a hard time noticing what the difference. Well, I, I, saw, hard, I, I saw one after the next. I think I would have a hard time side. noticing difference between 4K and 1080p on that's the what I'm saying. TV. I, I like, yeah. well, that 4K upscaled. TV. Oh, I, regular 1080p. I, I, I made the effort to go all the way down to that 4K TV. I was like, well, if it's 1080p on a, and it fills the screen, it's going to be upscaled. I really wanted to see it. When I was in New York, there was a thing, there was a sign outside that said, come inside and see a 4K TV. I was like, okay, great, I want to see one. Went all the way down, kind of searched around, there, hidden way in the back, and I'm like, and I saw it, I was like, this just looks like 1080p. Yeah, maybe. I'm saying I if there, there was a 60 a inch TV that was just 1080p, and next to it was a 4K TV, a 60 inch 4K TV with running 4K content, even side, side by side, yeah. If you're standing two feet away, you can see the difference. If you're standing ten feet away, less so. Yeah. So why spend twenty five thousand dollars or yeah. twenty thousand dollars? Well, the point is, in in over a period of time, then those panels will get less expensive. It, it makes and it, it makes more sense. For, I mean, because the TV I use not just for movies, but also games and also cable content. But you don't have anything that can drive. You don't have anything that can and drive games the, at four K. Exactly. And, or or ten eighty p even games They're, barely do four D ten eighty p. Well, it's all fake. In. And t- cable TV is seven twenty, but with s- terrible compression already. Yeah. Um, the only way four K makes sense is if I'm buying a, a, a projector or something just for a room where the screen is big enough. You know, hundred inches massive, right. where four K would matter. And that's and that's when you want. That's when you actually do want. 4K, like you don't need Retina resolution on a on a, a pixel on a living room TV. On a living room TV. The reason all these manufacturers are fucked is because they're fucking themselves. People aren't. They're trying to push these new technologies onto consumers too quickly. We're just now finally comfortably transitioned into HD. I think at this point we can say that we've crossed that. Blu-ray is on. the default. Blu-ray is the default. Everyone, not everyone, but like. HD, HD is fully penetrated into the living room. A lot of people. HD TVs are really cheap now. But they, and then suddenly, blue, and then 3D, they tried, they tried to push on people really quickly. App TVs. And app TVs. People didn't really want these technologies. Blu-ray TVs and smart TVs are still struggling to be in any way mainstream. I, 3D, like, nobody likes it. Well, the thing is, and all now, the And now this, well, what about 4K? People aren't ready for this shit yet. The content isn't there. They just TVs got their aren't, new TV. Uh, unlike cars, TVs aren't things that people buy every year. Well, car, you mean like cars. Well, they're big purchases. For some reason, cars, even though they have new models every year, they're incremental updates. They, are, they sell basically the same amount every year, and car companies can grow. Ford can say well, year over year they have increased in sales. TV, not so much. But that's because – so that's because people have been buying cars for a long time. So the distribution of when people buy cars is going to be spread right. there's out. Always, there's always going to be a certain group of people that are ready to buy a new car. I wonder if what happened – Because you know, TVs are for households. It's never the case. I wonder if the problem is when the inflection points happen with the HD shift and the and the LCD, the the rise of LCDs and plasmas. If that caused big humps, so now they've accidentally made TV sales cyclical instead of a kind of level curve. I don't know, but I, it just feels to me like they're very they're, they're very greedy and impatient to have people constantly be buying new stuff. And it, right. that that's a model that works for little gadgets that people like to upgrade every year, or every couple of years, and cost a couple hundred bucks. But huge TVs, yeah, the, the, a, a good TV should be good for f- at least five or six years. And people have TVs in their houses for decades. I, yeah, I mean, how long did the TV that we had when I was a kid was fifteen years old when my parents finally bought a flat screen? Yeah. I mean, just just 15 years old. Yeah. And it wasn't because they didn't watch TV. It was because it was good enough. It was 23 inches. It was a right. big TV. Yeah. And, and TV is entertainment, while a car is something you may need to get to a job. Yeah, but most people don't buy a new car every other year either. Or even every... Uh, like, TV, car upgrades are super-duper incremental. And, and they change and, the trim yeah. on the car. And, they change the headlight shape. And there are a whole secondary market for cars. Yeah. And not really a secondary market and for the pro- And the problem with it is, it's not like when they release a new car, they have to upgrade all the roads. And people are saying, well, I'm not going to buy this new car until the roads are ready for it. There is a whole chicken and egg thing with content as well. People aren't going to necessarily release the content until the hardware is there to, to support it, and people aren't going to buy the hardware until there's stuff to watch. Well, on and it. there's a limited number of reasons that you. That there's a limited number of things that are worth upgrading your car for, right? Like, like for example, you bought your car the year before they started putting auxiliary imports on the on that mm-hmm. car, yep. but you'd never upgrade. Like that is yeah. a hassle every day. Yep. But it's not something you would ever nope. ditch your car and get the new one for because nope. it's a massive expense. No, ten, and it's a, a ten-year a car, huge pain in the ass. At least. Yeah. 
So yeah, um, TV just, manufacturers just, are fucked. Just wait till Apple releases the TV, and then then May the annual March. So we annual upgrade cycle. We have heard from multiple sources who may or may not be in the know. March. Yeah, I still don't think it's a TV. I, I think I, I don't. Like you don't think there's actual panel? No, I don't. I think it's a small box that you. Pl- I don't. I don't think that. I think it's. I think it's a. It's a box that has a radically different approach to content, but it's a box. The thing that plugs the, into your existing. The TV. thing to me about doing a TV is, it's a massive product line. If you do a TV, because you have to scale from twenty-four inches up to sure. sixty no, or sixty-five they, no, inches. One TV. One TV. Their optimal size is what, like thirty-six, forty inches, or forty-two inches, or something. Where, where they can say that will fit into a living room of a apartment or a house, or a bedroom. No, the, the, like a, if, a big it, if it's a panel, they'll at least do two different sizes. Same way they do different sure, sizes sure. of everything. Sure. Two different sizes. There's two different sizes. iPad, different but sizes. Apple, MacBook, different sizes. Okay. Of iMac for, for their panels. They don't make the panels themselves. They source from LG and Sharp. And right. Other. And if they went to the TV, I think those companies would be. Oh, would be very happy because then their panels. Yeah, it's worked out for somewhere. Samsung with memory and CPUs, right? Yeah, well, it just doesn't. They make don't sell it, memory directly. I don't think it customers. makes. D- I don't think it makes sense. Again, the problem is if they do a TV, a lot of people are going to say, "Well, I already have a TV." Whereas a box that plugs into your existing right. TV and makes that, a lot more sense. I mean, on the other hand, that the TV market is real soft right now. The TV manufacturers are fucked, and Apple has had a pretty good history of coming into markets where where that that are soft. Like the MP3 player market was starting to kind of cave in when Apple announced the iPad and launched the iPad. Uh, sorry, the iPod. So we'll see. It's the great unknown yeah. for Apple. There's so many different theories, and they're all radically different. It'll be interesting to see what they actually do. All, all, we, all we seem to know for sure is there is definitely some kind of TV, the market, big TV play coming. The market for a box is much better than the market for a um, for a TV. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, the other th- and, and the the way to get consumers adopting is uh, fast. You'll get faster adoption with a box. Which if they want to build an ecosystem for apps and content, selling a ninety nine dollar box is going to make a lot more sense than selling a two thousand dollar TV. They make more money selling apps than they do selling iPads and iPhones. I don't think so. I bet their margins on iPads pretty good at this yeah. point. Um, but if they want, but. The, if they don't get apps on the TV, if they don't have enough of an ecosystem to get the apps on the TV, then the thing's going to fail. I mean, that's that's the long and short of it. So, um, and since the content providers are really hinky with them anyway, just because they don't want Apple controlling the well, the reason why I think it's taking so long is what's going on behind the scenes is Apple is busily and secretly making huge content deals with a lot of people. yeah, with people who probably don't want to make huge content deals with Apple right now, right? Frankly. Um, the interesting thing is doing the iPad launch in, in the fall uh, leaves a big gap in the, in the schedule for March where there previously was an iPad event. So yeah. maybe, maybe the March rumors. Maybe that becomes their TV event. Um, Intel CEO is re- retiring. Odellini is out. Okay. He's 62 years old. All right. What does that mean for Intel? Why was, was he ousted, or is he? Just no, he's just retiring. Oh, well, yeah. He had a good run. I'm sure, he has a very nice retirement package. Well, he. How many CEOs has Intel? Intel hasn't had that many CEOs in the course of its history. I right? just remember Andy Grove. Right, Andy Grove for a long time before him. Uh, 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 Gordon Moore. I was he the CEO? Him. or Was he just the CTO? I can't remember. Moore was the founder. Um, but yeah, it's so it, it's a it's inter- it's a big story because Intel makes still makes an incredible amount of silicon. Um, but I, I don't. I mean, Intel seems to have a pretty well developed, and and their um, their uh, roadmaps go usually about ten or fifteen years out. The the public ones go eight to ten years out, and I'm sure their internal ones go a lot further out. Did you see so. that thing about HP having to write off billions of dollars through eight ridiculous dollars. investments? Yeah, we weren't going to talk about that, but because Whitman was on uh, was on the radio yesterday, and she was very very defensive about HP. Well, she was on the the reason she's defensive. She wasn't the CEO when that happened. The, she was the, on the, the board. Allegiant? No. Uh, uh, what's the name of the company? Autonomy. 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 Um, she, yeah, she was on the board, so she did approve it. Um, I, I think HP, the, the apothecary years at HP are going to be the thing that destroy that company. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like the, it's like the Gil Emilio years at Apple, only worse. Y- yeah. I, I, something needs to happen there dramatically because they, they've kind of whiffed on on we haven't seen any products from them really on I mean we've seen a handful of products on Windows 8 but nothing exciting um, and for well, a while it looked like they were going to kind of take on Apple with the interesting design and, and that's just on the I think they, I think most of their money still comes I think still they make good products they still are a bit rudderless it seems like well, it's, it's like they're not as they're not as rudderless as say Dell which has become yeah. the Walmart 
shit show of PC vendors. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, they're, then they're not able to compete with on price with Acer and those guys. So, so Dell's so like, not, what's a good, their gap? not a good boy to buy a PC anymore. I I, I you know, we haven't tested PCs in a long time, so I don't know. But I don't know anybody who's excited about buying Dells. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Remember that? Ooh. Those are good old days. Uh, Nokia here for iOS is out. Has anybody installed it? No oh, is it? it? Yeah. I, I saw some, some buzz around that as like a good map thing. Uh, it's fast. I'll be, it's more fast. I'll be more interested to see Google Maps in its, in its new format come back because that's pretty, pretty soon, it seems like. The initial test, that I, the, like the five minutes that I spent with it yesterday while I was waiting for something else were not super impressive. How do you have it? I downloaded it on iOS. Oh, is it out? Yeah, that's, that's what we'll just started said this conversation with. Nokia no, here sorry, for iOS I'm is about, out. I'm talking about Google Maps. Oh, Google, oh, Maps, Google Maps is not, not out. Yeah, but, there is, but it is coming back. It's imminent. Yeah. It's in the queue for approval is the word on the street. Yeah. Um, so, but the here, what's the what 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 does the here thing have to offer? So, uh, Nokia, we talked about this a little bit last week, but Nokia basically has uh, a ton of map data from years and years of phones, bunches of other stuff, and apparently inside the halls of of Nokia in Finland, they have long felt that they should have created something similar to Twitter, like an SMS based social network, because they had the ac- you know, they had access to millions and millions of handsets, could have could have made that happen. Right. So they want to do they want Im- to make a similar kind of collaborative social maps platform. Um and that's what Nokia here is. But by all reports it's not my like I said, my initial impressions weren't real positive. Okay. And Yeah, I think Google Maps is gonna is gonna be the much bigger story. Um you don't know like about it? Uh, Google here? Uh, n- uh, Nokia no, here? You can't twist it. Or always oriented north is up. You do like that or don't like I that? I do not like that. I, I don't find that offensive either way. Can you, can't you rotate your phone? That, I, I suppose. No one doesn't have to do that. No, I want to twist my fingers. Look, touch, look, touch is the this future. Is, this is, oh my God, that's so hard. <laughs> oh, my wrist. I just rotated my phone 90 degrees. Oh. You could orient yourself to face north. That would be the easy solution. I suppose it should follow the way you're walking. That's the that's the upshot. Um, Microsoft knew that the kin would fail. This is uh, super everybody knew that the kin no, no, would b- fail before they announced it. Before they released it, though, they uh, focus I, I group test leaked surprise me from this week. Uh, oh yeah, this, this week. is interesting. Yeah, that that basically show. I think it's three or five or something people testing different things, and one is going too fast for the for the UI to keep up. One says this UI lag would cause me to make a lot of mistakes. Didn't they have like a huge party at the Microsoft campus after the launch of Ken? A huge celebratory. Well, hey, oh, this is awesome. We're well, because at some game. point you're so pot committed, you kind of just got to like shit it out and just <laughs> wait for it to go away. <laughs> See, you're sitting on. Well, it's uh, like at some like you know when you like and there, you're there like, is a point. Uh, yeah, there's there no is, way, no way for it to turtle there, back yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. There is a point when you're having a shit where there's you you cross a point of no. Happy like, Thanksgiving, I everyone! Can't, I can't suck it back up into my sphincter. <laughs> it's got to come out, and they were clearly at that point. <laughs> All right, cool story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wonder if Microsoft. I wonder if Verizon's going to sue them. Because oh, Verizon is the one. I mean, Verizon was the launch partner for the oh, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, they were the ones who probably got burned as much as Microsoft did on on that product. God, and what I mean, terrible, terrible embarrassment that was for everyone associated with it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the videos, the videos leaked said, if I paid money for this, I would go return it. You know, blah blah blah. It was real bad. It was the kind of thing you'd expect to see from something much earlier than that. Looks. So like. they knew it was a lemon, they even as they were rela- announcing it. And, and oh, I read that it. story. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, Casey Johnson wrote something on ours or some other stuff too. Um. Oprah also, we've we Talking have seen embarrassments. we have seen behind the curtain on Oprah's my favorite things. Yeah, and I think that it is product placement more so now than ever before. Wow, well, what are what are on her list of favorite things? Well, I wonder if any of those align with mine. So she's given away Lexuses before, and and or maybe I'm Toyota. Sure, I'm, sure sure there is, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. I feel some like she gave overlap. away a car. I'm sure there is a some car. Overlap. Cars to everyone Everybody in the audience. That, that wasn't that wasn't a Lexus. No way. That was like no, a Pontiac. No, it was yeah. It was like a Pontiac G5 or something. Okay, well, whatever. It's still, but fucking cars are car. I imagine that a lot of her favorite things are things that she does actually like. I also imagine that some of her favorite things are things that she's just been paid a lot of money to say. Right, and and probably the things. things that she's paid a lot of money to be favorite are also the things that. Um, but when you tweet about how much you like the Microsoft Surface and you tweet it from your iPad, yeah. that is a problem. Well, so. What so is that, is it, do you think she actually like part of 
let's say she was paid to say that she like put Microsoft like Jessica Alba, things, um, except less overt and not in the ads. Uh, do you think that part of that deal is that she actually herself has to tweet it? No, from account or I some think, PR. So some some here's marketing the thing. person. I think there's probably multiple levels of deal. One is that you will stand up on a stage in front of people and say, this is awesome. And that's her one, commitment. She has to read the brief about the service right. and say the thing on the stage. Right. One is that you, you will make that. it your favorite thing. And then a whole level higher is you will be seen in public using this thing. I bet that those are, there's, I bet there's contractual levels of mad craziness between I'm those two extremes. I'm guessing that she tweeted it herself because a lot of celebrities don't manage their own Twitter accounts and they do have social media teams that run all that shit for them. But a real social media team would know that when you tweet something, people can tell what device it's been tweeted you from. Might you think would that. think that. From our experience, no. It what? happens all the time. The missed, the missed tweets, whoever the social, the, 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 like, so there are several people I've seen on the internet that very clearly tweet their own tweets. Alton Brown runs his own Twitter account because he writes little notes and responds to people. Right. It's a very funny Twitter account. Right. Um, Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper. Twitter legend. Right. Calling out people for uh, chocolate custard or something. Coconut I can't remember. flan. Coconut, Coconut flan. flan. <laughs> That's flan. it. Um, and eating Fritos. 50% right there. Um but but yeah, there's a ton of celebrities, and I think Jessica Alba's and the and Alyssa Milano clearly is a s somewhat of a celebrity who tweets right. her own tweets. Right. Charlie Sheen, for example, had people tweeting for him. That was probably for the best. That was all set up and managed, and yeah. there are people that just thank do you. That, that was the, I was yeah. looking for the example of that, and I think that the people who run that stuff, the self-proclaimed Twitter experts, are so sometimes not it, it, Twitter really, experts. Yeah, so really, it's tough to differentiate because there's a, the parody account of uh, was it uh, not William Shatner, but uh, Jack Nicholson who couldn't use Twitter. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult for Jack Nicholson to use Twitter. He's an old dude. Well, these, have you seen the parody account? It was no. really funny. Uh, <laughs> he was just like, it was as if he was put in front of a computer. He's like, how do I change egg? I don't like egg because the default picture is the oh, egg. Oh, I see. That's good. <laughs> Jim, how do I change egg? Typing it in. Now I figure this out. At, so, and then the reply thing. So your contention is that Oprah had, that one of her social media people tweeted this, but. I, it's bad either way. Like, the, the thing I want to believe is that Oprah is sitting there saying, oh, shit, I got to make this Surface tweet. Let me do it. I'll just grab my iPad. Like, she looks at both of them. She's sitting there at the table, and the Surface is <laughs> well, right here, and no, the iPad's right well, here. To be fair, there is no Twitter client for no, Surface. No, there's, there's Tweetro and Metro there's, Twitter, there's both no of which Twitter. are dog shit. There's no Twitter.com official Twitter right. app for the for right. uh, Windows 8. Right. Um, Everything Metro. that's available is a steaming pile of shit. Uh, did you see that uh, the new uh, Peter Shernan... I think that's his name, who joined the board of directors of Twitter. This is a... The ex-Fox guy? The ex-MySpace guy. Yeah, the guy who ran MySpace, who was going to turn MySpace around. And MySpace uh, supposedly is now going to be a Spotify competitor. That was leaked earlier this week. Mm -hmm. um, but he announced his joining of the Twitter board of directors with an at Twitter message. So he wrote at Twitter. So no one saw it unless they were following him. Right. And Twitter. So that's so a super common mistake. That's a, like everybody makes that mistake at he one point. Join the board of Twitter. What I'm telling you he's is he's going to run he's in charge of I'm not saying I'm not defending. I'm saying that is the most Ooh. common Twitter mistake. You see that all the time. You do see it all the time. Cuz nobody knows if you if you add it you only it's only the subset of people right. that well, follow. So again, it's if you're going to be on the board of a company, you should probably know the yeah. basic rules about how your product yeah. works. Guys, I I love the optimism here, but I think that you dramatically overestimate the level of technical and and product competence of most board members. I always think a sign of someone putting a, a period before the person's name is a sign of someone who's Twitter competent. Being yeah. a being a I like the tilde instead of the period. It's oh, a little more attractive. Okay. Yeah. No, I like the, the period is subtle. That the is kind of the, the, the de facto style. That, that is. I, I, I'm pushing the till. I'm, I'm, right. I'm Don quixote up against okay. the windmills. Okay. All right. The, ride, ride that donkey. The, uh, <laughs> there's no, no okay. Um, the, uh, also I, the thing is, what I, what I was going to say is board members, in my experience, treat companies like they are spreadsheet games. Remember the, like those old baseball sims that Dan Morris used to play? Yeah, at the end of the day, if you've got someone like Peter Chernin who's making like big executive level decisions, he doesn't need to know every in and out of the product. He just needs to know the, the, the big picture. Money coming in, money solid. going out, potential yeah. money coming in that we're missing. So the yeah. board, they're just number, accounting people. Pretty well, Reed Hastings was on the board of Microsoft and he just left and he, he sounded like he had some good insight. Who's Reed Hastings? About, he's Netflix CEO. Oh, right, right. Um, he sounded like he had some good insight about Microsoft. He had some you know unkind well, things. That's the about. other kind of board member. There, yeah, yeah. I would argue that there's probably two kinds. Okay, so you're saying there's Morgan Freeman, and then there's uh, 
uh, what's his name? Uh, Rutger Hauer. Who's Rutger Hauer? Blade Runner and, oh, and Battle uh, Begins. The, yeah. Did you get the this, memo? This analogy is going nowhere. <laughs> I know. I know what you're trying to do, but there's Rutger Howard, the numbers guy. Yes. And there's Morgan Freeman, the yeah, guy who understands the, the product. Yes, the oh, I thought guy. you were talking about Morgan Freeman, who has to come in and explain what's happening. Uh, I mean, like too much every, South Park. Too much South Park. I, mean, I watched like three South, South Parks Park. last night while I was doing other stuff. But that, that, R- Rutger Hauer. I, under, I understand what Morgan you're saying. Morgan Freeman. I think we're off the rails here. Yeah. I would Inception noise, but I don't think we've earned that yet. Um, early Windows 8 mock-ups? I didn't read the story. Norm, what's going on with the early Windows 8? Uh, there are some photos, again, on our second cut, Peter Bright his story, and you can see screenshots of the early start screen and, and how messy it looked. Let me see. Um, and actually, it, it seems like there's there's more photo, uh, more information in these. It's more these color. Tiles. It's a wider color um, palette too. And, and also, there's a time in the corner and stuff, and they obviously refined it to be more uh, visually friendly. But it goes into this this thing in the Windows 8 where a lot of people are complaining about the Windows 8 apps having ads. Now, uh, there is I forget who did it, some some uh, user testing, but if you go into the the like the I guess Metro apps, like for something like eBay or a uh, some built-in. I, I actually, there's some that are really good. I like Netflix. Netflix on Windows 8, I like a lot. I can't get it to work. Really? Yeah. I, I think it's fine. I think like, but something like uh, an eBay where I want certain information, it looks okay, but the information I want, it's I, it's, I get so much more from the website, from Here, on the website, here's and, and then there are ads. So the overall problem I have with Metro, I've been thinking about it a lot. The problem I have with Metro is that none of the apps are good enough to warrant moving away from full, like moving away from people to run stuff in a window. The biggest thing, the, so, the, the number one thing I've heard from people that actually defend, and, and, and it's, again, I haven't spent a lot of time with it. I like Windows 8. I think it looks cool. But a lot of people that because you haven't spent a lot of time against, yeah, with it. A lot of people defend against the criticism, saying, "Oh, it's not so bad. Just you know, just get rid of the the tiles." And live in the desktop, and it's basically a slightly better version of Windows Seven. Mm-hmm. So basically, what they're saying is the best. The best thing about Windows 8 is that you can get rid of its flagship feature. Yeah. Well, no, you can't really because you have to do it. You have to launch into that. Right. The well, other the, thing the that analogy, annoys me is all the default apps have ads, or not all of them, but weather and news, news and stocks. Yes. Which I like. I I whatever. I don't care. Uh, it just it feels really weird to me that I'm paying money for an OS that has a whole shitload of well, ads. Well, the market analysts you see that this week were very. Uh, bullish i mean sorry bearish on uh, windows 8 well so that's the question like we don't know how many copies of windows 8 have been sold at this point well some of the analysts was, were i don't know where they're getting the numbers from but they're saying the sales so far have not been great right um that people like they're, they're looking at a lot of people complaining about finding the ui confusing and not liking it which is really the worst yeah thing. hiding core ui elements off screen that require gestures that you don't explain how to do yeah. is is, is going to be real bad is yeah. this something that pc because they expect to sell you know 350 million pcs next year um over the entire windows ecosystem if that happens and people are on windows 8 regardless of whether they want to or not no. or they buy a new pc uh, is that going to encourage developers to actually go develop apps maybe but if not if people don't like using metro if people avoid Metro intent and like part of it, we'll see the Surface RT returns. I'm going to be really interested to see how the how how many of those get sent back. Since most of them are sold directly from Microsoft, we probably never hear. You see that one guy is suing Microsoft now about about the uh, the memory thing. Uh, that's we talked about that some two weeks ago, right? Yeah. Well, we talked about the fact that it, the 32 gigabyte only has half of that yeah. space usable. That Microsoft is now being sued over that. I think that's probably right. I think I think the guy has a case. Right. Um, I, in fact, actually, I think everybody. I think I think the good thing that can come out of this is truth on all sides, because I think that the 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 Apple doesn't uh, again all, demonstrate as I said properly. Before, all companies should be required by law to state how much of the memory is actually user accessible. Well, and the difference is on PCs, people advertise here's the hard drive that's in this device. It is a 120 gigabyte hard drive. With the tablets, they're saying it is a 32 gigabyte device, which is seems fairly different to me I, I like that seems like a very clear distinction to me um the the yeah I, like the, nobody knows how many copies of windows have been sold except for probably microsoft um we don't know how many units how many how much hardware has been sold we don't know how many box copies downloads they sold um and i don't think they've released any press releases it's, yet. it's the first it's, last night i mean today. i don't use my pc for a lot other than gaming but it's the first windows in a long in a long time that I haven't bothered to go get. And it's cheap, too. When you can download it. Like, you don't even have to go to a store. Yeah. You can do it from the internet. Yeah, and it's only, like, what, 40 bucks? I, it's 40 bucks for an upgrade. If you want to get it, if you ever want to get it, you should get it before January 1, because I think that's when the, the promo there's pricing no, there's expires. There's no benefit to me, though. Like, 
In fact, exactly. All, in fact, it's breaking a bunch of games that I would uh, uh, that I would want to play. But it doesn't so. break stuff. Everything works for me. Oh, I've heard a bunch of people complaining about certain games in well, Windows People 8. always complain about something. Anyway, um, the upshot is Windows 8. Nobody knows how many copies it's sold. Yeah. Except for Microsoft. And I've got a desktop computer as well. So like all the cool stuff that Norm's doing with swiping and shit. It's like I, would, I wouldn't even get the benefit out of the touch. Yeah. yeah, for desktop really makes no sense to me. And, and a lot of people like Lloyd on desktop uses Metro, uh, the, the start screen, as a start menu. So all he does is get rid of the, all the tile, the rearrange the tile so it's just shortcuts. So yeah. what he would normally have in the right. start menu for shortcuts. Because right. that makes perfect sense. You, everybody should be doing that. Um what mail client do you use on Windows if you don't use Outlook or Windows Mail now? Because Thunderbird's not being updated anymore, right? I don't right? use mail client in Windows. You use a web. You I use, use, a, I the use web. Chrome and multiple tabs okay. and different web browsers. I like having a mail client. I do Why? Too. Um, it seems a little faster. Gmail's always fucking slow. No, oh, Gmail's so fast. I think Gmail's ugly. And I think every mail client, aside from a web browser and Gmail, uh, the download, the refresh takes long. If I say, if I receive an email, it always gets to the web browser faster. Well, it pushes now. You haven't used a mail client in a long time, I've have used, you? I've used mail clients on Windows 8. I use the built-in one. It's really? slow. It's really bad. It's like at least 30 seconds to a minute. I'm saying from myself to myself before mm. it actually get, gets to it. Weird. Um, Search is also better in Gmail. I like, and there you have uh, uh, advanced modifiers now. Firefox? Uh, it's we can still skip a the story. Thing. Yeah, it's Firefox OS coming out. You can download a, a s- emulator to run Firefox. They want to make a mobile OS, Firefox. They think they can do it. It's web based. That's crazy. HTML based. Crazy. Um, there was an interesting story from Nielsen about. Uh, I guess it was based on a survey about what kids want for Christmas. Uh, and they broke it down into six to twelve year old kids and thirteen plus kids. Speaking of surveys, yes, my housemates got an awesome deal yesterday where two of these people doing, I guess, surveys also for set-top boxes stopped by and spent two hours interviewing my housemates, and they got 150 bucks each. Jesus! To talk about their TV viewing Did they give habits. them cash? No, they were uh, little Visa cash cards. Have they tried to use them yet? Yeah, they're 150 bucks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, just, you can make money. Just to talk about how you, can, how you use your TV. Were they going door-to-door? You can, you can, you can do it, just do surveys online and... They'll give you money. Yeah. They want, the they survey want online, I signed up for that once, and, and then it opened the floodgates to spam. So I, I, I recommend like, against Well, that. I have things to say about how I use TV and how I think set-top boxes, interfaces should be. So you can actually inform no, I know. development and make money. Yeah. I've gone to the TiVo, Ooh, everybody to the TiVo yeah. broadcasting stuff before. Oh, that reminds me. i still got to get a TiVo. I want to get one of those. You should do that. It's maybe really maybe there's a good Black Friday Happy deal. Christmas. Yeah, I'm gonna look into it. Um, I, you know, they usually do a friends and family thing around the holiday. I'll go to the site and check and see. All right, that is that, yeah, is, that, is that legit? Friends and family is mm-hmm. that like that is like the so the secret of buying TiVo because the my objection to TiVo is the monthly charge. Right, that's yes, the only thing I don't I like do about not it. Like monthly charge. If you pay more upfront, it's a lot more though, isn't it? But it's two. It's basically a year and a half or two years of service. Yeah, but you cannot you can't upgrade the box. It's tied it's, to the machine. You can put a new hard drive in the box, okay. which is the only thing that ever dies in them. Mm-hmm. So you're good for as long as they support that piece of hardware, which typically is five or six years. And as years. long as they don't introduce features that you really, really want in the next box. And I can't imagine what, at this point, they're going to add that I would really, really want. Like, okay. it's, re- it's pretty feature complete. So how much, how much more expensive is it? It's like, instead of 400 bucks, it's 800 bucks probably. <sighs> it's $15 a month. Uh, is the monthly charge per box. For the first box, it's less for the second $800 box. $800, so you can go boop, 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 boop. boop, 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 boop pretty good noise. Boop, boop, boop. It's, a, it's a pretty good noise, Norm. It's ridiculous. Xfinity has a new uh, a new cable box out called the X1. Maybe I'll just look into that. It's a slightly nicer interface. I mean, if you want somebody to kick you in the groin after the show, we can arrange that, too. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Uh, so what do you think the number one thing a 6 to 12-year-old child in the U.S. is interested in getting for Christmas? Uh, or uh, actually, the question is, is a fun buying in the next six months. See, kids are a lot more sophisticated than they used to be. I was going to say like oh, some yeah. kind of toy, but it's probably like an iPad or something. That is exactly right. right. Number one, fifty percent of children aged six to twelve are interested in buying an iPad in the next twelve or interested months. Interested in receiving an iPad. Yeah. It's only interested in buying it says, one. It says interested in buying. I'm just reading interested the chart. Interested in their parents buying them. Yeah. yeah. What do you iPad. think the number two item is? Oh, this is also very very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm probably wrong, but I'm gonna guess a game, some kind of game console. That's oh wow! Did you read the story? Is it an Xbox? It's Wii U. It's Wii U. Wii okay. U. Because they would want the, new, well. they would want the Mario. newest one. Yeah. So Bring we don't Mario's. see those ads. I bet if you watch Nickelodeon, there's a lot MTV, of Nintendo Wii U ads on. Oh right Wii U. Even during South Park and stuff like that, it's Wii U. I haven't seen any Wii U ads yet. 
I, I don't watch ads very much, but there were a bunch of sounds. Because you got the boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I paid paid a lot of money for that. Um, number three is the iPod Touch. Number four is the iPad Mini. So they actually differentiated between the iPad and the iPad oh, Mini. Oh, okay. My iPad, hunch that, is that that's not probably true. My hunch is that a lot of kids just said iPad, but they meant iPad So Apple Mini. has three of the top four spots. Yeah. Four, well, four, four of the top five, five stops. Oh, really? Because the iPhone is number five. Holy crap. And then after that <laughs> is a... Com- play to Apple. <laughs> is, yeah, is a computer... Get them when they're young. And just to be clear, Apple doesn't really market to kids. No. No. It's really crazy. But, you know, w- w- I'm so curious. I, I don't know. If, if you market stuff to kids, kids won't want it. They want the stuff that the grown-ups have. I think that this is a situation where kids want what their parents have. Yeah. Or, yes. I, I want to know what the mind... Because that's the age that's right In the mind of a too. child or a kid in, in middle school... Because elementary Norm, school, close your eyes for a minute. Let's think back. In middle school, because I have no idea what that's like right now. So middle school is a tough place. It's kids are yeah. They, they, have a, they understand that they, you know, that life is complicated. It's not magical as it was in elementary school, but they're still not at a point in their life where they feel like they have any control over any of they that. They haven't developed irony and, yet. And and they're and the and the social situations are very very complicated in middle school. If there are any middle schoolers listening to the podcast, first of all, you should be listening to this podcast. Yeah, we use naughty language. Adults only. Um, Second of all, send us a message. I want to know what, what the playground situation is like. So when I was in middle school, you didn't bring anything that you liked to school. At least I didn't. Because you, you would have you would have been taken away and you would have been stomped. Wow. Yeah. Growing up in the mean streets of Bristol, Tennessee. Wow. Playground stomped. Playground stomped. Yeah. <laughs> AstroTurf <Yeah>. stomped. <laughs> no, no. We didn't have AstroTurf. We had grass. We were in the country. Yeah. It's not here. It's not like, playing football. It was before they invented that f- bullshit plastic stuff that b- kids bounce off of when they fall off the So swings. what? So what then are the items that older kids want? Well, it's interesting you ask that, Gary. Uh, kids aged thirteen and up. What do you think the number one is? I mean, I guess I'm going to go. With it. it's, I'm going to say it's still an iPad. It's it's still you are an correct. IPad. Uh, well, much only, smaller, smaller percentage. Only twenty one percent. I think they're more. They more uh, realize the price of these things, and probably kids thirteen and up have to actually buy their own. And things. they're probably thinking about utility too. Because I got to think, because the number two is a computer, which is, uh, which they to me, know they can do everything. They can have all the chats on the computer, right. the sexting on the computer. Right. Yeah. And if they get the right kind of computer, they can even do the FaceTimes. Yeah. And the, yeah. iPads, it's still kind of limited. It, uh, number three is a tablet computer other than the iPad. That, it's, to me, is surprising. Which I assume is, means Kindle Fire and Nexus 7 as well. Did no, I, no, I, e-readers no, down, ki- down no, it's later. Now, kids aren't... Oh, it's, yeah, but Kindle, Kindle Fire, Fire, Nexus, Fire, yeah, Kindle Fire yeah. is separated out, but Nexus 7 isn't. But, kid, so, but kids aren't saying, like, oh, I just want a tablet other than an iPad. Are they just taking every other answer? I, that's no, they, they're not, because they split out the Kindle Fire. I, I, I do not there. think that is correct. I bet the Kindle Fire is a subset of tablets other than the iPad. Mm, yeah, any kind of Android tablet or whatever. Right. Is going to be in there. Think about that poor bastard that, that wants an Android tablet. He's All right, so just, just ru- okay. So what's what? Uh, iPhone, down? Wii U, Wii U, iPhone, smart TV, e-reader, smartphone other than the iPhone, um, iPad Mini, Android smartphone, Kindle Fire, Connect for a 360, iPod Touch, Samsung Galaxy Note or Tab. That's nine percent people want that. I can see how if you're a kid you might want that. It might be good for taking notes in school. Wow. Maybe Microsoft Surface, three percent. Yeah, so the losers are more interesting, I think, than the yeah. winners here. Because the losers, the bottom five for six to 12 year olds are the Samsung Galaxy Note tab, still 10%. I think six year olds want everything you know, is the takeaway. I really want to meet the kids age six to 12, and I'm not going to stop there because that's really weird, who the 6% of them who want a Microsoft Surface. 6% of kids age six to 12 told Nielsen. They wanted specifically. I wonder how they Microsoft do this survey. Surface. Do you think they hold up a picture and, the, and they, if the kid is like, "I want that," yeah, then like they a, say yes. No, like no, a, no. It's no, like no. a menu at a shitty restaurant. You just <laughs> yeah. point to the thing no. you want. I bet they said, "You know, what, what are the things you want?" And they had to write in order of things they want. And Maybe I, they're I, sitting I in front of a screen. Like, Excuse me. Did you know that? I, I don't want to be in the walled garden. Pardon me, sir. Age 6 to 12. Right. I, I believe he, No, he is sucks. in the walled yeah, garden. So I, <laughs> some six-year-old kid going, it's, <laughs> all, it's all about ecosystem. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Microsoft, I believe Microsoft Surface's oh ability to unite desktop yeah. and Pro touch. RRT. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out of this walled playground. <laughs> Oh, you got to watch out for the walled playground. Walled playground. <laughs> uh, have you guys been following Star Citizen? It's Chris Roberts, the Wing Commander guy's game. Yeah, and he's made a lot of money. Yeah, so the Kickstarter finished yesterday, uh, Tuesday, and they have the new record. Well, it's not really on Kickstarter exclusively. It's, they, they built their own thing and then also posted it on Kickstarter. But they raised $6.3 million to make what seems like super-duper freelancer. 
Yeah. Which I'm super I'm duper excited, excited about. about. I, ho- I hope it's great. Did you pitch in? No. I've never pitched in on a Kickstarter. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I gave him, tw- I gave him uh, the money to get the game. I, I'm interested. You've never okay. pitched it on a Kickstarter? I'm thinking about maybe doing it for what actually is kind of the rival. You know, David Braben is doing uh, the new Elite Ooh. as a Kickstarter. I would, I would Kickstart that too. And I have more of... I, I love Chris Roberts and I love his games, but I have more of an emotional attachment to the Elite world, which is also now being Kickstarted. Well, the thing I liked... So the thing I liked about the Elite was the same thing I loved about Freelancer. It would, which was that they were they like there was economy and you could kind of just yeah. go I mean, around I, and do I, stuff. Elite was really the the beginning of all of those games. Yeah, see, I, Elite. I never played Elite until it was too old to like the graphics were bad enough that I oh, had I trouble going it right back when to it. it. Came out nineteen eighty four. I want to say yeah, that was way so well before my time. Fucking good. Well before my time so with PC good. games. Um, so yeah, uh, six point three million dollars, new record, and and. Uh, they ended up hitting all of their stretch goals. They're building this massive galaxy. I'm super excited about it. It's 2014, though, so it's a long it's wait. It's still not a huge amount of money when you consider an ambitious game like that. Well, I mean, could, game budgets are, are big. 30 or $40 million. I mean, it's it's not untold for a game like, especially like Assassin's Creed or something that's open oh, world sure. huge I like mean, that is a $40 yeah, I mean, million they're, they're game. They're like Hollywood movie budgets, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm really interested. I think the the idea on this though is that you get you raise a bunch of money from the community and essentially pre-orders, and then that that allows you to go out and get a loan from a bank rather than having to go get venture funding or yeah, get maybe a publisher. So. They'll, they'll probably supplement it from you know from yeah. other sources. So, so that's that, definitely a good start. That lets you that lets you make good decisions. Uh, so, so you don't end up having beholden to a publisher to, to investors or something like that. Yeah. It sounds great, and I I really hope it's great, and it's exactly the kind of game that I would want to play. So well. Uh, Good luck to Chris Roberts. Uh, OS 10.9 rumors. Uh, this is the as yet unnamed successor to Mountain Lion. Mm. It, it, word on the street is it's going to include Siri and Apple Maps. Wouldn't surprise me. Not really excited about either of those. Uh, if it's if Apple Maps included, why isn't God OS 10 OS 10 whatever Mac OS next version needs touch. It, it has to be in there. It has to be. In the it has touch, somewhere. dude. I don't. Ten point eight had touch too. Ten point seven had touch. It's right here on the trackpad. Not good enough. Okay. But you're talking about new hardware with touch screens. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're not yeah. going to see that for another yeah, year. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's a. Uh, we won't see not a new like OS thoroughly integrated. It doesn't need months. to be everywhere. I don't want it to be everywhere. Okay. But where it makes sense. Bigger trackpads. That's what. That's, that's my. The whole wrist rest will be trackpad next year. Cool. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Wired had an interesting story about. Th- I love these stories because they they always seem really. I don't know. It seems convenient to me. The stories about uh, connections between skill at video games and skill with surgical tools because it's the same kind of you know fine motor control oh, I've seen and hand eye coordination before. and all that, that stuff. Been around forever. Well, this is a new one. So there was a study, and I and I, I read it last night, but I don't, I'm going to probably fuck up the details, so I apologize in advance. But basically, they were looking at they they put kids in front of a game that simulated and high school and college age kids in front of a game that simulated uh, robotic assisted laparoscopic surgery controls. Which basically, when you see there, those things that you put your fingers in, there's a bunch of different gloves and That's right, awesome. And right. right, it looks it looks like it's crazy. The thing that they found, the interesting thing to me was that college kids who on average played an hour or two more of games a day than the high school kids uh, were significantly better at the, at the, the laparoscopic that game. That was their method for testing? What the do you mean? between college kids and high school kids? It sounds like that's a terrible well, there, there was, test. It was a much larger... This was the one interesting takeaway I oh, got okay. from this. It wasn't like they separated college kids in one room, high school kids. No, in no, no, no. Okay. They they did everybody individually, and then they gave them a survey about their habits about gaming and okay, TV sure. watching and stuff like okay. that. And, okay. Um, so the upshot is, playing certain types of games is going to improve your fine motor control and hand eye coordination, in theory. Did they test between difference using keyboard and mouse and a game controller? I assume that it that, that they did not. I assume that they distinguished with that on the survey, but I don't know. I don't know what the mm-hmm. breakdown on that was. They didn't. That wasn't in the story, and the the survey was behind a paywall. The study was behind a paywall, so I didn't pay the thirty bucks. Um, th- I mean, th- so the idea, the the takeaway was surgeons should play more video games. Great surgeons should play more video games. Yeah, Pro- probably not Wii games. 
<laughs> Unless you want to get carved up like a Thanksgiving turkey on, I don't know. on the operating table. What was that? There was a there was a DS slash Wii game that was Oh um, Trauma Center was very Yeah, popular. Trauma Center, yeah. And, I learned uh, how to do surgery from that. Yeah, I mean some of those games like boom blocks require very uh, you know precise <laughs> <laughs> surgeries like yes, I'll be taking your kidneys out tomorrow. Don't worry, I've played boom blocks. <laughs> I'm at level ninety. Yeah, that's Dark great. Souls. It's yeah. all about the Dark Souls. Yeah. Slow, deliberate actions. Oh. Um uh, do you want to talk about the Japanese robo book scanner? It's a really cool norm? video everyone should watch. Um, it's just awesome how these robots can scan books. And this, this robot uh, flips the pages at 250 pages per minute. Like data. Like, yes, Yeah, exactly. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then a camera takes a picture, and it can know the optimal time when the page is about to turn to take the picture. And then the well, it does, it does that because it, it measures the oh, it, like, it, like measures three D space digitizing yeah. books. Yeah, there's three okay. D space, and then it knows how curved the page is, has a three D rendering of that, and then flattens out the page. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And so you get a whole book. You get, the book's just really being flipped by a robot hand, right? And then cameras just taking pictures, and you get high definition scans. That's great. Do you awesome. guys do you guys know about the captcha stuff that Google does? Like why they do that? Have we talked about this before? Nope. So you know what a captcha is, right? Yeah. It's that little thing you have to type in that has two kind of fuzzy words that are all distorted. Yes. So Google made that recaptcha service, or or one of the captcha services. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's the recaptcha. Um, and what they do is they use. Uh, scans from books that they scanned with the Google for Google Books mm -hmm. as the source when they have an oh, inconclusive so scan. In. Oh. So they think they know what the word is, but they're not sure. And then they feed it to, to people who fill out billions of those captures a day, and it allows them to clarify whether the whether the book That's is good or not. Brilliant. Oh, so it's not just to test that you're not a robot, right? You're, actually, you're, actually actually you're giving them data. At oh, the same time. Wow, I hate captures even more now. Mind so, blowing. So they do that with a lot of stuff. Like that game that we talked about last week, the place game, the um, I can't remember what it's called, the in immersion or whatever. Uh, the idea behind that is to collect path based uh, uh, maps data for stuff that they can't get otherwise. So like footpaths, are, they have bad data on right now. But if you're playing that game, you're walking along footpaths, they collect your data the entire step of the way, you you think you're playing a fun game, they're collecting data on, on where footpaths are. That's very cool. In places that are covered by trees or satellites yeah, don't cover I whatever. Like that. It's, um, it's real gamification. It is real gamification. Is, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Achievement points, BS. Um, AT and T activated FaceTime for cellular. Uh, Why did they do this? Is was there a, a uh, court case or something? The, the, no, uh, there was pressure on them. Yes, uh, litigation and FCC pressure. Uh, but originally, as we all know, as the us on the table, people who had Verizon unlimited FaceTime over cellular. Yeah. On AT and T. No, it's not unlimited. It's in well, your data plan because you, there is an unlimited plan. Correct. Yeah. But That's it's hard. not capped within your data plan. You can't not do it because your carrier doesn't allow. Like I could FaceTime Gary right now. If you yeah. FaceTime, you totally could on our LTE you, network. Yeah, right. And the, it the, it's toward, the it nation's your data, uh, widest LTE yeah. network. That's right. It counts toward your data, whatever data yeah. you paid for month yeah. to month. And AT and T did not allow that for AT and T users because they wanted to say FaceTime over cellular would only be allowed if you join our new mobile share plans. Right. The bullshit plans. The bullshit plans. And they uh, stepped back on that and said uh, a few weeks ago and said, okay, fine. Um, so many people complain. We're going to allow it to people who have regular sell your plans, not the mobile share ones, but regular LTE plans. But, user but plans. not the grandfathered and unlimited Not the grandfather unlimited ones. Yesterday, grandfather unlimited, such as myself, LTE over cellular, or right. FaceTime but over you LTE. you realize, again, as soon as you go over three gigs, that FaceTime is going to turn into a slideshow. <laughs> but I still will be able to use data. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> you'll, be able, you'll, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to get to that, that throttle cap so much more quickly now. Yeah. Um, can you tether yet? Are they going to allow that, or I are they going to still charge I, I extra think, for that? I think tethering is extra. The I got to tell you, so I just updated to this unlimited, not uh, the, the sharing You did the plan. mobile share, well, yeah. Well, Leah got I, I knew an iPhone as well, and we, so I, we both went on to the sharing plan. So we have unlimited minutes and all that stuff, and we have eight gigs between us. And we also got the personal hotspots. So it was great. I had a friend, when we went to Louis C.K. the other night, <coughs> a friend was sitting next to me on his, he, he was saying, what's this game you're playing? And so I'm playing Letterpress. He goes, oh, that looks like a lot of fun. I says, yeah, you should, get, you should download it, and I'll play, play with you. And so he started to try and get onto the app store in his, on his shitty AT&T network with one bar. And I said, I eventually got tired of watching him get frustrated. I said, here, just hotspot it off my Verizon phone. And suddenly, like, he was able to get the download and everything. Yeah, so you're right. an internet superstar. I am. I love being an internet Gary superstar. Gary Witta. 
Yeah. Um, that little hotspot feature is great. It works really well. It's, yeah, it's not something you're ever going to leave on all the time, but I actually carry a spare battery, a, M a Mophie, with me. Um, and then, then I can plug it in and let it go all day. I have I a question to. about that, though. Yeah. On Verizon, because you can't use data and voice at the same time, can I still get an incoming call if I'm hotspotting something? You can something? get an incoming call. But I would have to break the But then the it breaks right? the hotspot. Okay, okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I'm not like... That I could, they can at least get the call. Yeah, you know, okay. the call will register. It's not like the, the people will get higher busy. higher priority than downloading right. Yeah. Right. apps. Right. Yeah. But in accepting the call, I'm going to, yeah. the hotspot will shut down. Okay. So, Norm, you put something here at the end of the list that is very controversial. Um, Engadget. We don't usually talk about this is kind of inside baseball, I guess. But Engadget posted a story last week. Oh, they have a great redesign also. Week. Yeah, the re redesign lovely. I need to go look at that because yeah. Engadget is the, the site that I most frequently go to for tech news. I, I quite, oh, thanks. Yeah. What about? I'm, I'm, just, I'm fucking with yeah. you. I know where we. I know. I know. <laughs> I know the limits of tested tech coverage. We just do the. You guys stuff. are more like the feature section. If I just want news, news, then I'm yeah, going to go yeah, on yeah. Keep straight digging. up news blog. Um, so they posted a story earlier this week that I think it was editorial. Uh, yeah, editorial, and it was. Oh, did something just crash? No, nothing oh, crashed. No, I said low battery warning. Okay, I haven't charged. Wow, it. already? Well, I haven't charged in a week. Oh, okay, well, that's good. Um, so what's the what's the story? On this. Uh, they, they wrote an editorial about how pricing on um, tablets, like the Nexus 7, Kindle Fire, uh, the aggressive pricing will hurt the tablet market overall. So a race to the bottom story, basically. Is, yeah, absolutely. And uh, the anti-Apple crowd came in and said this article was very defensive against Apple mm -hmm. and justifying Apple's high prices on mm -hmm. the iPad mini and other, other products. And there were 4,000 comments. Is that a lot? Set. That's a on, lot. Yes, that's, that's a lot on anything. That's a lot on anything. Four thousand. Like uh, when, like the Verge does a controversial, quote unquote, controversial review, like of the, the Surface or like Windows Eight, because lots of Windows fans out there, right? You get maybe a thousand comments. Four thousand. Well, anytime you set Apple people up against non-Apple people, so it's I don't always, think they always that, a, a fight. I, I did not. I read the story just because somebody sent me the link before the comments happened, and and I was like, yeah, this is this is exactly right. And people are going to start yelling about us being the Apple Defense Force, but but setting price expectations for this, unless the manufacturers can actually hit those price points, uh, nine months or a year so what, from now. What's their basic argument? Why are cheap tablets bad for the market? They're, they're basically just saying they're setting up a race to the bottom where the margins are going to get thinner and thinner, and the vendors eventually won't be able to make a profit and make products at the price that people expect, and it'll be basically like the laptop PC market. Which is which uh, is. I mean, I, I, I get it. If like it's it's one thing to have cheap tablets, but if the price of that is shitty tablets, that people kind of go, oh, I don't really like this experience. And yeah, that's bad. You want yeah. a premium experience, like the iPad is a premium version of a tablet experience, a bit yeah. more expensive, but you're guaranteed to have a good experience. The more interesting thing about the story isn't the actual editorial; it's the fact that they made an apology. That Engadget made an apology oh. as a footnote to this to this editorial, and it said basically, look. Hey, we're sorry. We didn't mean this to be a, an apolo iPad apology piece, um, which I found unprecedented. I'm surprised. Why would they do that? I don't have any idea. Apparently, it was not with the approval of their EIC. The apology? Yeah. Oh. Tim Stevens removed the apology. Oh, good for Tim Stevens. Yeah. Right on. Right on. That, that, that is being addressed or has already been addressed. Yeah, I mean, I could see bit posting a clarification in the comments that said, hey, this isn't intended to be an Apple apologist piece. You're reading into it what you want to see, which happens a lot. So it sounds like the majority of these 4,000 comments were people calling them Apple apologists. I oh, wonder what the source of the comments was. If there was a message board thread someplace that got out of control and people started comment bombing or whatever. I don't, I don't know what it was. Page of AOL, maybe. Could be front page of AOL. Yeah, that's a lot of lot of... But those people... I, I wonder if the people on the front page of AOL give a shit about iPad and Nexus yeah. 7. Anyway, um, I thought I thought that was really weird. Do you want to take a minute and uh, talk about what we're thankful for, gentlemen? Is it is it too too saccharine and and b b b pedestrian for this? Is I wanted to ask Norm what his thank. What, what's your Thanksgiving like? I'm gonna play play a song. song like oh, you know, we go. <laughs> I was given a break. But no, and and that that's and that that's like and that's how wow. I celebrate Thanksgiving. That's <laughs> amazing. That's the best story I've wow. ever heard. It just sounded like you had no interest in Norm's story. No, you just cut him off. No, nope. and that's how I celebrate. What do you do for Thanksgiving, Norm? Uh, you know, we we, we do the, do the laundry and build the railroads and all that stuff. Oh come on! <laughs> See, I did not go there. You went there. I thought that. Well, okay. I mean, is an Asian Thanksgiving di yeah. different in any no, way? No, Fam family dinner. 
things, yeah. turkey and turkey, stuffing and gravy yeah. and, and, yeah, and mashed potatoes. More duck and, yeah. Okay. What, uh, like, pre- presence of duck. Is, is the duck roasted? Duck, is it? Duck. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you have a duck instead of a turkey? No, no, there's a turkey and duck. Oh, oh you do wow. multiple meats? Yeah. I only yeah. do one meat. Uh, I think less less bounds to the rules of traditional Thanksgiving. Because the pilgrims? I do like yeah. a nice uh, ham on Thanksgiving as well. I feel like that's always oh, we used to do that at Honey Baked Ham Company ham. Yeah. No, I, never, I do ham at, the ham at Christmas. I wanted to do a goose at Christmas this year. Yeah, I, I always wanted to do a goose. Did you, do, you, you talked about doing one last year, and then I guess yeah, you didn't do it. Don't, just didn't do yeah. it. It's easy to talk about things, harder to actually do it. It's, it's, I don't know. I'd be afraid. I don't know how to cook a goose. Well, Leah's brother is a is a chef, so we would have got some good tips. But yeah, um, and we're away for Christmas this year, so someone else will cook. Oh, that's nice. But um, I'm thankful for, uh, I mean, so many things. Well, you have a you have a beautiful baby girl. Thankful for my beautiful baby girl, and you know my my family, and uh, all the all the blessings of life in general. It's just I, I'm very fortunate. It's time to reflect and on it the is year. good. It is good to remember that sometimes because we moan about, oh, it's taking five minutes to upload this update. Fuck off. You don't have any real problems. I don't know, man. That Wii U launch update was real slow. Real slow. We'll talk about that in a minute, though. Somebody said, I can't remember what it was. It was, uh, somebody made a great tweet that got retweeted a lot. It was like between, I can't remember what, it, what the first thing was. It was like between such and such a thing and the really long firmware for, we, for Wii U. This has been a really tough week for people with no problems. <laughs> which is totally the Twinkie, it must have been the hostess thing. That SNL sketch, but the iPhone sketch was, was great. The racist one? Yeah. Well, the I super mean, duper it, racist it was, one? But it made a very good point that we are so... Fred Armisen should not we, we play live, Asian people. We live in such a privileged world. I think Fred should play anything with Fred Armisen. Right. We live in such a privileged world that we've been forced to amplify trivial problems to the to the scale of real problems whereas yeah. there are actual people out there so those people, people, that, people actually have real problems you know i'm gonna go ahead and tell you the place where i dropped my phone it's kind of worn down so you don't even notice it anymore yeah, it's good like i only see it on one side now we're doing the thing this year where uh, instead of giving gifts to each other we're gonna do the adopt a family thing and give, uh-huh. give a random family that doesn't have things gifts that's nice yeah well you're a hard person to shop for gifts for yeah, because I just you buy tend everything. to go out and buy whatever you want. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. All of us have that problem, I think. Yeah. Um. So what, oh, well, you're coming over to my house for Thanksgiving. Yeah, and uh, we'll eat uh, uh, turkey and and uh, maybe play some Mario Brothers. Yeah. Huh? I start. You? I started the brine. I started brining last night. I'm excited. I want to see, I want to see what, what kind of sides. You, I, I I mean, the turkey is great, but I'm always more interested in the sides. What S- sides are you doing? So we do the traditional American Pepperidge Farms blue stuffing, the chunk, not the chunks, the the ground up pieces. Yeah, that's good. Uh, with celery, onion, cook it all in chicken broth. So it's a little little heartier. Oh, I wish Leah was making her sausage stuffing. That's the um, best. She's she's if she wants to bring stuffing, we are we will maybe we'll just have room in the oven. You could bring a sausage. Stuffing, just, and just take a bite. They sell out of stuffing it. outside Thanksgiving. With oh yeah, Do you buy stuffing any time of the year. Well, can, I know, and I, I, I will eat. I would eat stuffing all year round. Just a big bowl of stuffing and gravy. I don't think that's on your. Thing. That's like the carbiest yeah, thing. Yeah, it's you not can exactly eat. on my. Um, on my. Oh, we should have talked about hostess as well. That would have been a good. We story. can do. I figured I was saving that for uh, outtakes. Maybe for fake outtakes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what are, what are you doing? Are you doing uh, green beans? Uh, Gina made a green bean casserole last night and made chicken, made cream and mushroom soup from scratch. Ooh. And we had leftover soup, so I came home from childbirth class last night. And it, by the way, that was the bad shot. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. Um, and had f- homemade cream and mushroom soup that was the best thing I've ever had. Wonderful. It was unbelievable. Love it. This sounds great. Um, what kind of potatoes? Mashed. Yukon okay. Golds. Okay, good. But this, all sound, this all sounds great. No. And how do Straight. you what? Why don't why not salt, garlic? Salt, no? butter, and cream. And how do oh, you, you do your gravy? Whole clothes, uh, heads of garlic? No, not the, no garlic mashed potatoes. Do you for use the Do you use the turkey uh, drippings for the gravy? Fuck yeah! Okay. And we do butt stuffing too. I don't believe in in that cowardly don't stuff your bird bullshit. I've never done the stuffing your bird because it is you can die. Well, you, the trick is the secret of stuffing the bird is that you measure the temperature of the stuffing. When you so you take the bird out when it's done cooking, and then you, you you scoop the stuffing out immediately. And if it needs more temperature, if it hasn't hit 160 yet, then you put it in a casserole dish and put it in the oven and cook it a little bit more. How could you one die? of the great one of the great um, episodes of the West Wing is that Thanksgiving episode where the president calls the butterball hotline. One of the best things. <laughs> oh, ever. What does he do? Have you, have you seen? No, no I don't. I didn't watch the West Wing. It there's was a, a mistake. There's a thanks. There's a Thanksgiving episode. Um, where he's he's cooking the turkey for the family, and he's in the, he's complaining. He can't get an answer on like how long to cook it for when you stuff the bird, 
and says something to one of his advisors like, there should be a national number that people that need turkey tips on Thanksgiving can call and get answers when the hotline is staffed by experts. And it's like, there is such a thing. It's called the Butterball Hotline and it's staffed by experts and you can call and it's free and people will give you answers. And he calls it up and obviously he can't tell them who he is. <laughs> but gets into a fight. Sheen, yeah. he got in a fight with the, get, the get, Butterball Hotline? Well, the, and the Butterball person is like, you sound really familiar. He's like, uh... But uh, yeah, get, gets into an argument with one of the butterball experts oh about how God. to properly cook stuff and cook a that turkey. Is, that's so Sorkin. It's a great episode. But yeah, I don't think I've ever. I I've never done the stuffing, but I, I imagine. I mean, why is it better? Why uh, is it better it, to cook the stuffing inside the. Well, because what happens is the fat and the and the the juices from the bird permeate the stuffing. Oh man, I really should. I really should have eaten breakfast before I came out. Oh yeah, you made a mistake. Mm. We're we're you'll see tomorrow. Okay, I'm excited about it. It's good. I'm excited What's about What's unhealthy dessert? about uh, uncooked stuffing? Uh, so you basically, it's the same thing as eating uncooked turkey. Because oh, the juices. Because the juices. Mm. So you have to make sure that the stuffing reaches the temperature 160 or 165 yeah. to and, be safe. And also, Do if you're doing really, really high-end stuffing that's got like oysters and stuff in it. That's oysters. a whole other set yeah. of health problems. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't, like, I don't recommend stuffing. I only stuff no meat stuffing. But you cook your whole turkey. In the I turkey. just like ghetto whole. Thanksgiving. I don't like it. Like I'm one of those. I don't even like cranberry sauce. But I'm one of those people that believes that cranberry sauce should come in a fucking can and wobble. So Gina started the homemade cranberry sauce when I was leaving the house. She this doesn't. Morning. See, I don't eat the cranberry sauce, so I'm all good. You know the cranberry Do you sauce. Put French fried onions on top of the green bean casserole. Uh, I think she's making a topping for the green bean casserole. Okay. We did the Paula Deen green bean casserole a couple years running because I figured if you're going to eat fucking green bean casserole, you might as well eat the fattiest one possible. Yeah. But it turns out that like it it when it cools, a thin layer of grease congeals. On the top, mm. which was super gross. So we're not doing Paula Deen okay. this year. Okay. Um, the Paula Deen had the French onions, the the French's onion string onions on top. Yeah, I like those. Um, I do too. I used to eat those out of the can. Oh yeah, me too. Um, Love those French fried onions. Yeah, the raw raw oysters. If you do oyster or liver or something like that, uh, Andy McCurdy's I think wife makes. Uh, maybe Andy makes. I can't remember. Makes a liver stuffing that's like a cornbread liver stuffing that is awesome. Yeah. And I'm not even a huge liver fan as a general rule. So yeah, um, so yeah, butt stuffing, regular stuffing, mashed potatoes, green bean casserole, cranberry sauce. Sounds. I'm good. really just in it for the sandwiches, though. Best part is leftovers. Turkey yeah. sandwiches are good. Leftovers. Now, what kind of bread do you use for those white, leftovers? White sandwiches? ass white bread. Yeah, just ghetto bread. The whitest bread you can find. Wonder bread. And then I put mayonnaise, pepper, a little bit of kosher salt. Why, why white bread? Why not? Why not a nice soft roll or wheat roll? So the white bread. You want the bread to get out of the way of the sandwich. You do, the yeah. bread is the the, so the, the delivery. The, yeah, the bread is basically a container you can eat. You can see a Tupperware. The Cranberry Tupperware sauce. And a fork. Tupperware and a fork. Cranberry sauce. Some iceberg lettuce. It's got to be the iceberg lettuce. Lettuce at all. Yeah, you no gotta lettuce. have lettuce. Oh, you gotta no. have a just little turkey, crunch. Turkey stuffing and gravy. You bite that sandwich. Done. You want that sandwich to bite. Back. I might just make stuffing sandwiches. Stuffing sandwiches are good. Too. Do you like the open face? Where you put a, a slice of white bread on the bottom, some turkey, some stuffing, and then a gravy. Just pour it on top and eat with a knife and fork. Never, yeah, no, I, li- I like I like a sandwich sandwich. Yeah. With two layers. Yeah, I don't know about that. You need fully enclosed. I like gravy on a sandwich. A little yeah. gravy makes a sandwich oh. go a long Does way. Does anyone sell so buns and sandwiches where the buns are connected at the bottom? Yeah, you can. Well, or you can get a bun that's just you have to cut and then you leave the fold. This is making me hungry. Still yeah. bun, like a hamburger bun. Being yeah, well, you can get you can get soft roll. Like soft rolls by default come that way. I'm, I'm not saying soft rolls. I'm saying buns. And yeast rolls. Bread. You're in charge of yeast rolls, by the way, Gary. If so you want rolls? Yeast, yeast rolls, I don't know what that is. Rolls. You like mean like dinner, dinner, dinner rolls? Yeast dinner rolls. Dinner rolls. Yeah. You know, what you mean like crescent rolls? I mean, we can make crescent rolls if you I want. Like, I like crescent rolls. <laughs> when well, you talk, that's what I well, like. Well, Lachi da. I can just bring like a tube of the Pillsbury ones. You could do that. They're really good. The, flake, the, the giant, the the jumbo ones, the grands. The trays that they make at um, Andronico's are really good too of the rolls. Okay, we'll, we'll, fig- we'll, figure, we'll, yeah. we'll figure. something out. I think Gina's out. talking to Leah. It'll work itself okay, out. Okay, yeah, they can they can figure that out. Leah's been making uh, her maple ice cream. I know. And I today saw that. she's making her oh. chocolate cake. Like those are my two favorite tweets of the week. The chocolate stout cake and the maple ice that cream. That chocolate stout cake is something else. <sighs> really good. When did she made that for? By the way, um, your chili recipe was fantastic. Oh, did we you make, make it? Yeah, we made that and it was great. I think that's from uh, the Test Kitchen New yeah, Science Test of Good Kitchen. Cooking. Yeah, it was a great, great chili recipe. Yeah, it's it, it's much better than the other chili recipes that they made in the past. And I think they call it Wuss Chili or something like that because it has beans. Do you want to talk about what we've been testing? Uh, yeah, we can do that if you want. I figure, well, oh, hold on. I wanna, uh, Norm, what are you thankful for? We, we got sidetracked. Everything. I got nothing not to be thankful for. Everything's we're, we're coming all, up, Chan. We're, all, we're yeah. all very lucky. Yeah, yeah. I'm thankful. I got a kid Norm's coming. Got his youth. Everything seems healthy. Any social life? 
those got it all going on. Childbirth classes. We, we have our we have our families. Yeah. We're at different stages of stuff going North's on. North's ten years behind. Yeah. Because he's ten years younger. But he's not. Yes. But he's just going through. I got, I got my ten year high school reunion he, coming. He up. has all this. Hey, are you going to go? Yeah. I didn't go to mine. That's a mistake. Well, I would have had to fly back. And I, also, we didn't have one. So it would have been really sad if it was just me there by myself. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this has been a good year. I can't imagine anything more depressing than a high school reunion. I'm glad, I'm glad in, in Britain they don't have them. Oh, uh, really? Because I wouldn't go. I, I, I don't want to see those people ever again. Well, so my 10 year was in anyway. 2003, which was kind of before Facebook. So nobody was in touch with anybody. I, my guess is we'll probably have a 20. Which is next year. Jesus. How did that happen? Um, yeah, if I had gone to my 10-year high school reunion, there would have been a bunch of people with like 8-year-old eight eight year kids running around. Yeah. Oh God. And me. <laughs> Cargo pants. And, and then at the, at the 20 year old reunion, they'd be 18 years old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. There are, there are, there are people. Creepy. There are people on my Facebook with kids that are finishing high school this year. Huh. Or maybe next year. FTS. Yeah. What's FTS? Fuck that shit. Oh, very good. Uh, Gary, what, what have you been testing? Uh, I've been testing the Wii U. Hey, me too. Because we both got them. Yeah. Uh, Surprisingly, after all the fuss, wasn't terribly difficult to oh. get one. So I wasn't going to wait in line for a Wii U. No. I, I, I wasn't mentally prepared I, for I that. wasn't. And then what happened was, on the morning of... Jeff Gersman and Ryan Davis and some other guys are, are tweeting their efforts. And, and Jeff's saying, I showed up. And there's like no one in line. There's like four people in line or whatever. And I said, well, you know what? Maybe. What if you hold a line and there's no one there? Yeah. So it's like I the went. Zoom. There's two targets nearby and they're very close to one another. And so I went out to the first target and they said, well, we've got the white one. Yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't really want the white one. Super racist. I got it anyway. Because yeah, I feel like I can return it. <laughs> so or you can unload it on somebody else. Yeah, someone else will want one, yeah. just in case. I thought about hitting you up for yours, for your well, white there you one. Go. Darren Gladstone eventually took it off. Good for Darren. He's a good guy. Yeah. He can use the Wii. Um, and uh, then I want to. And, and the guy said, uh, I said, can you call across to the target across the street? It's weird that there are two big targets in such close proximity. Yeah, they're like are, half a mile away. There are there. Not even that. Well, and well, one's a great land. No, they. I mean. Both have grocery they're both stores very, now. They're both very large targets. They all, well, all targets have grocery stores now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Apart from, the, I think even the city ones have some more grocery sections. Great. Uh, so the guy said, I only got the white. We sold out a black. I said, can you call over and see if the one across the street? He said, don't, they, they don't. Just take this one. I'm like, okay, fine. I went over there just in case. And the guy said, oh, yeah, we've got black. Yeah. So then I rolled in uh, two hours later. Because I, I, when you, I talked to you at probably like 9.30 or 10.00. Maybe ten thirty. Yeah. You said, yeah, they had a couple of blacks left. You should go up and, s- and you should call them and yeah, see. Yeah, they had several. And so I, I was like, oh, I could call, but in the uh, the distance I live from that target and yeah, the amount of time it'll take me I to am. get through the voice yeah. jail, yeah. I might as well just put on pants and jump in the car and drive yeah. over so there. So what happened when you went over there? So I rolled in. I couldn't find the electronic center because I've never been in that target before because parking is always bad there. Yeah. And I finally found the electronic center, and like there was a dude behind me. And I got there first, and I got the last black Wii oh, U. Oh, good for you. Did yeah. he also want a black Wii U? And no, he, did, he wanted a copy of Madden for the 360. Oh. So, you know, we were cool. So you um, actually got the last one. I got the last one. And you one. got it because I t- gave you the hot tip I appreciate location. it. And tested readers have you to thank for our coverage of the Wii U, which will be coming next week. Sometime. Yeah. So I got it home. And How much uh, is the black one? 350 Hmm. Okay. I don't think there's ever been. I don't, I, I, I don't think there's ever been a, such a case of like it, the black one is clearly the one to get a difference. So the cradle, you get a cradle for the charger for okay. the for the pad, which is which is actually a huge very difference. nice to have. Yes. Mm-hmm. Although the battery, well, we'll talk about that in a sec. But um, and you get to copy of Nintendo Land, which, which is an is extra sixty bucks. Fifty bucks, sixty bucks on its right. own. Yeah. Plus you get uh, an HDMI cable. Three dollars cable. You get a few discounts in the eShop, but mostly what you get is thirty-two gigs of storage versus eight gigs. So that's a big and the d- the discount in the eShop is for the life of the machine, right? Uh, I'm not sure. And the difference of price is three fifty and five hundred. The, the 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 biggest no three fifty three fifty and three three hundred for the white three fifty for the Only black fifty buck difference. Yes, yeah, so yes. you basically you, you get oh, Nintendo oh, Land the storage and Nintendo Land and a charger cradle thing and a bunch of other shit. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah it's well, not even close. Yeah. Um, so I took it back. Brought it home. You same experience, I assume. Yeah. I had a little bit of trouble connecting it to my Wi-Fi because I'm. I it didn't. Oh, like I plugged mine into Ethernet. I don't fuck around. How did you plug it into Ethernet? Ethernet. Uh, the the original Wii has a USB Ethernet con- uh, adapter, wow, which really? also works with the Wii U. Yeah. So mine is wired. Pro tip. 
Oh man, I wish I had that because the Wi-Fi setup was the, a pain the in the ass. The sensor bar, a bunch, a bunch of accessories work with the Wii U. Well, so yeah, the sensor bar is the same thing. It's just two infrared I lights. Got it. I think it's like Nyko, or maybe it, maybe it's it's Nintendo sells it. Maybe it was like twenty bucks. It plugs into a USB port in the back of the Wii U or the Wii, and you plug an Ethernet cable. I it's, uh, have a spare Ethernet connection downstairs, so I just use it. Oh, for man, that. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, sure enough, a Nyko one for sixteen dollars. Worth getting if you've got any if you if you've got a spare Ethernet port, it's worth getting. Yeah. Um, so plugged it in. The first thing it says is, "Hey, let's set up your Nintendo account." Yeah. Do you have a Nintendo Fun Club or whatever their frequent yep. partner thing is? Yeah. Um, you set up the account. There's some questions about whether the account's tied to that machine forever now, because it seems like you can't log in. Right now it is, but I imagine they'll change that because a lot of people are complaining about it. I, I, I wonder how many people are going to have multiple Wii U's. It's still annoying. i got to think no that's a low percentage. Do this. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of sick kids, 6 to 12, want Wii U's. That's true. Yeah. The first thing I actually did was begin the process of the Wii transfer. Because I've got a bunch of stuff on the Wii that I wanted to bring over, especially my Miis, which I, I, Leah and I were very successful in making Wiis, Miis that look much, very much like us. Yeah. And I didn't want to have to replicate. I tried doing it again, and I couldn't get one that looked as good. So I thought, well, I'm just going to copy the. Did the, the transfer other work? Over. I know some people had problems it with that. It worked, and it's adorable. Have you seen the transfer process? No. It's great. It's Pikmin, right? It's a bunch of Pikmin go into your Wii, inside the, the virtual guts of your Wii, and like pack up. They're like a moving crew that pack up all your data. And they take it into a rocket ship that flies through the space to your Wii U. And then they unload all your data into so the Wii U. So I'm, I'm afraid to do that because this is the work Wii U. And I don't want to ma- get my Wii stuff, on uh, my virtual console stuff, on a Wii U that's not mine. Uh, that's certainly something to consider. Yeah. So because um, this will but eventually you, end up living in our office. I but assume. you now have your Nintendo ID on it, which is also Which may be the problem. Maybe yeah. a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why not do it? And then buy another one that you j- that you can just donate to work or something. Or I just don't expense the one that I have. But anyway, we'll you figure. There are many options. Yeah. Um, anyway, all told, it ended up being about five hundred bucks for. A, it doesn't come with a Wii Mote. Neither of them come with a Wii Mote, which no, I find really weird really since you need Wii Motes to play games. You need Wii Motes to play pretty much. So you, you don't need they them. Expect people they... that already have Wiis or. Well, but the the thing is, you need the Wii Motion plus Wii Motes or the Wii Mote with the mm-hmm. condom and the the foot thing. The th- yeah, I'm surprised that they didn't ship a Wii Mote with it. I was a little surprised. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that they'll but release. Most, most games are playable on the gamepad. Right, but so first-party games. I assume that at some point they'll do the same thing they did with the previous, with like Skyward Sword and Wii Resort Plus, and where they'll bundle additional controllers at reduced cost well, with you the know, game. When friends come over, it's bring your own Wii Mote. Well, that's what people did in the beginning when you couldn't get Wii Motes. Um, and of course, given that, given it being the age of uh, consoles that we now live in, the first thing you do is download a massive fucking patch. five gigs. Yeah, took and that took an hour. Took me an hour. Yeah. Same thing. And that was over a wired connection. It took an hour. It was an hour. It, the now, problem was Nintendo. You don't us. have to do it. But nothing works. If you um, don't do it, you have nothing internet connected. There's no Miiverse. There's no, um, there's no online functionality whatsoever. Right. And also, the other good thing is that you, ca- you can actually do it in the background. So you don't have to sit there and wait. Oh, I didn't know that. You can do that. other things while it's down. Oh, I let it run in the... I just did it in the foreground. Yeah, I just waited. And it was a lot... I don't know what it is about Nintendo. I mean, this was a big patch. Even simple things... The Wii, which was the fir- I guess the first you know really connected Nintendo console, on this one, the online functionality is so slow. Downloads take forever. It's not just online; it's everything about the so so. It's incredibly slow. Yeah, the the UI in general is very very slow. the 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 OS is very slow. Yeah, I mean seriously, like to go to the settings and to the menu and back again, you're looking at like 15 seconds between screens. At one I don't point, know what is going on. At one point, I was like, I b- busted out the Surface to see which one was faster, and the yeah. Surface was faster than this. Wow. So when you're slower than the Surface, yeah. that's fucking bad. Um, it's and uh, also I don't, I don't know if yours is locked up. My, I haven't my, had any crashes. Mine has locked up a few times, and apparently a lot of people had this problem where you got to just pull the power to get it back. Oh, up I again. haven't had that at all. Yeah. Um, did, the, did you don't try any next gen games on it, like the the I guess like an Arkham City or a I didn't. No, track. well, and again, this is this is, I think is indicative of the not being a strong. I mean, launch lineups are never strong, and they don't really matter in the end anyway, because the games will come. They always do on every system. The Xbox 360 didn't have a great launch lineup. Now it's got amazing games. Yeah, I mean, at, at Xbox 360 launch, the best game was Geometry Wars. Uh, Far and away. At launch? Yeah. Yeah, at launch. Wow. Yeah, Xbox 360 had a terrible. It was it was like lineup. Cameo, Perfect Dark. 
Um, project, was there Project Gotham, maybe? The day, the days Call of, of Duty 2. The days of systems three, launching with at least one really killer game. That's over. We don't so, have that anymore. I, I disagree. I, I think you're wrong about the launch lineup on this on this console. Well, let's talk, so look, here's what happened to me. The guy, when I bought the Wii, had a massive crate of games. Yeah. And he said, because all the games are out. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, look, we have a two, buy two, get one 50% off. So if you're going to get games, get them now. And I was like, well, let's see what you have. I knew I was going to get Super Mario Brothers, because that's mm -hmm. obviously the no-brainer. You've right. got to have that. And then and like, the prices are 60 bucks now for these games, right? Most of them. Yeah. But then I couldn't find two others that I really wanted. I was thinking, right. well, maybe Zombie U. They didn't have Zombie U where I was. They had Zombie U where I was, but I looked at IGN actually gave it a really bad review, but then subsequently really good reviews have come out. It's really hard. I still don't think it's for me. It's not for you. Yeah, it's not for me. And, the, and then there wasn't one other game that I wanted. I'm not going to get Assassin's Creed or Arkham Asylum right. for the Wii. I'm going to get it for the Xbox 360 or the systems. Or the I PC. Already, or indeed the PC. I mean, you've already played Arkham City on the PC at this point, yeah. theory, uh, theoretically. It came out two years ago. I think that their launch strategy is pretty good. I think if you hadn't been keeping up with games, like the core gamer, people like us, dudes who play games like just and play everything. Yeah. Are are not interested in Mass Effect three or Arkham uh, Arkham City or Assassin's Creed three probably. I think that's okay. I think with Zombie U they have a really hardcore Dark Souls Mega Man two style hard it's good game. I mean now that the good reviews are out there and I do I, I think some of it's really clever. I didn't know this one idea that like when you die yeah you really die and you just become another survivor. It's almost like really, a roguelike. Yeah, that's really cool. And then if you want to get your stuff back, you go kill you the guy that was you before. Kill the zombie before. that you have now become. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, I think New Super Mario Brothers, I know the bomb guys have been kind of hard on it. I, I didn't play as much of the 3DS New Super Mario Brothers game, so maybe I'm a little further away from it. I think it's terrific. I think it's quite good. Yeah. And and in a, in, a dr in a world where we didn't have New Super Mario Brothers, where we didn't have side-scrolling 2D Super Mario Brothers games for like 15 years, I am okay with them cranking those out as fast as yeah, they want. It's a, it's a great Mario game. Uh, Leah and I played a bunch as like Mario and Luigi. Yeah. It's actually harder. When you play, because it's so easy to accidentally bounce off someone's head and kill them, or well, that's they the mess fun up. of that game. And that is it's chaotic. It's hilarious and fun. But yeah. if you really want to play to win, that's not the way to play. But we also played some of the. Boost the way to play, just to be clear, is using the gamepad where one person helps the other person. Yeah. So we played we played the boost mode as well, which is where you can drop platforms and bonk enemies on the head to help the other person. Leah mm -hmm. was being Mario, and I was being the boosty person, and that that's really fun as well. Um, I I think that stuff's really interesting. I think the Miiver stuff that hit. Two nights ago, it seems like they're rolling out updates to stuff. A lot constantly. of people seem, seem to really like Meverse. Um, I want to say, isn't it just like a really basic message board? I mean, what am I missing about um, Meverse? You, you can. So you get. Have you gotten the prompts when you're playing Mario Brothers that say, "Hey, do you want to share yeah, this do accomplishment? You, do you want to post to Meverse? Yeah. I think that that's the interesting thing. Is it's kind of like you never played Dark Souls or Demon Souls, but that ability to leave notes in the world for other players that aren't in your multiplayer game or anything like that, but just say, hey, something hard's happening here, or you can also troll oh, people with that. Oh, so if you've that. played before, I could show, and you've, and you've, played, the, you've played this up before, and you can say, as I'm about to, to yeah. play, there'll be a note from you saying, ooh, watch out, this level's really hard yeah. or something. Okay. Or, like on, Mar on, Wii, on Mario Brothers, if you complete a game without taking any damage, and a, a, a level without taking any damage, or do something that's, it's almost achievement-y, right? But it's right. not really, it's not universal, and it's not at a system level. Right. It's just, hey, I did something awesome, let me share it with my friends. Yeah, see, and I, then that person's me pops up on, on, your, yeah. on your map. I like it. I think they're getting better at the social stuff. They're still not there. Like, the simple act of sending and accepting friend requests is still really complicated. Is it a code, or what is no, it? You well, no, you can actually come up with a name and stuff, but, like... Both people have to put it in. Yeah, well, if you do it a certain way, if you do it through Meverse, then you actually do get the notification. Oh, really? The best way to send a friend request is to go to Meverse, search for a player using their name, have them have their profile pop up, and send them a friend request. Oh. Yeah, it's a pain in the dick. Um, um, but so I, I walked out of the store only with Mario Brothers. I couldn't find another game that that's I, was what I, I did the same thing about buying. I thought, ah, whatever. If something turns out to be good, I'll get it another day. Um, Obviously, the, the the black system comes with Nintendo Land as well, and I played a little bit around with Nintendo Land. Haven't that's the sort of thing that you need. A, I think Nintendo Land. What it sounds like is it will it, it's going to be successful in this for for Wii U the same way that Wii Sports was. In that, yeah, anyone can understand it. It's great with groups of non gamers. It's going to be a fun. I this Thanksgiving, you're going to have all the Nintendo Land stories will come out. People, their aunts and uncles playing Nintendo Land, having a great time. So, but maybe not to the same. This is this is I think is the fundamental difference. Wii U is, and I love the fact, I've got a lot that I don't like about Wii U right now. And I think it's a system that could go either way. But I love the fact that Nintendo is the only company, again, doing something really, really different. 
Or at least committing to it. Yeah. Because I mean, everybody Out else is going to have that smart glass, smart glass and the kind of tablet nonsense. Yeah. And, you know, the Wii Motion was a huge deal at the time. Sony and Microsoft both obviously copied it in their own way because Nintendo had, had done something truly yeah. new. And now they're doing something truly new again with this dual screen system. And whether or not it will work, I don't know. What I do suspect is that it's not going to have the same immediate appeal that the Wii Motion did, where that, anyone can pick up a Wii Motion and go, oh, I get it, I'm swinging a tennis racket. Then that's, that's the why, difference. That's why it was huge. Yeah. I don't know if this is going to be the same. The, the difference between Nintendo Land and, and, and Wii, uh, Wii Sports is that with Wii Sports, you already understand how to bowl. You already understand how to play tennis. Yeah. Each of these Nintendo Land games have these fucking awful tutorials right. where it's like, you do this to do this, and you hold up the thing, and you look yeah. around, and, and now look shoot. at this screen. Now and look at that screen. It's, it's too like, much exposition yeah. for, too much explanation for dudes sitting around with your grandmother in the living room at Thanksgiving, I yes. think. Yes, and I agree. Going to be interesting to see. The other, the other thing, though, is I think, I think that there's a potential for this to actually be a kind of interesting core experience for core game people. Like I think that I think that the two screens is going to when once people figure out what to do with that second screen, it could they really cool games could come out of this. I think I don't that know. I, I, it's a it's a three hundred dollar gamble, which I don't. I think it's interesting. I think it's slightly with. different to there's a reason there's a good and a bad reason why. It's not like the Wii. The bad reason is you're not going to get that same art and uncle pick up the thing and swing yeah. the tennis racket accessibility. It's not going to take off with non-gamers the way that the Wii did. I think, though, that it's ultimately going to, as you say, actually be a gimmick. The, pro- the problem with the Wii on the Motion Plus side was while it was great for aunts and uncles and what have you, when it came to making games, developers eventually were like, I don't know what to fucking do with this thing. And it felt like they were shoehorning these ideas in. That's why we got a lot of shovelware. Well, once once they got the, the gyroscope in the controller with the Motion Plus, it changed that a little bit. Because you had games like Skyward Sword. But it was at the end of the life cycle, life cycle of the console. Skyward Sword are ultimately is probably the only, and Wii Sports Resort were the only games that actually used that thing well. Yeah. Um, at least that I played. Yeah. And, and I think that the... the I think that launching with that, like I think if they had launched a Wii Sports game with this console, I yeah. know they would have been eviscerated for doing the same thing over again yeah. in the press. But had they done that, it would have been a much better experience than the first one. And here's the difference. And here's the difference. I think that the Wii U, while not having that same accessibility, have a core, as you say, a core gameplay gimmick, which is much more interesting. Yeah. And I think that developers will be able to get much more out of the classic example that. Penny Arcade and many others have, have talked about is Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yeah. So I'm the DM, I've got the gamepad screen, only I see it, I control the game, and everyone else with their Wiimotes plays the game off the main yeah. screen. That's I, I imagine playing Left 4 Dead where you play the AI director. Right. I exactly. mean, that's awesome. Right. There's all kinds of really exciting potential for, for group gaming with that system. Um, actually, on Nintendo Land, I want to play the Luigi Mansion ghost chasing game, because I think that is yeah. a, a good game. Well, we'll go through all that stuff on yeah. Thursday. Yeah, the yeah. ghost chasing one is the most similar one to like the the demo we got last year. But no, Chase Me is in there too. Oh, they have Chase Me in. I'm is not, it not in there? I don't know. I thought so it was. maybe it's maybe it's better in the long run. We the original Wii had a great tremendous surge of activity among non gamers, but then people just got bored of it and it never really caught. There were never, well, those people, there, the, there were never really any great games for the Wii like in the last well, few years. Skyward Swords. Okay. Mario People Galaxy. Like that. Mario Galaxy Two is amazing. But, but, Waiting for but Mario the whole Galaxy control mechanism HD? after all the excitement, it just kind of. It just kind of do you think they out. need a Mario Galaxy that uses a second control, or do they bring back Mario Galaxy and just have it in the the high? I'd be um, well, it's Mario Galaxy two Mario uses Galaxy. you could have two people play because one person could collect stars. You do that with the first one as well. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. So the thing that I realized on Sunday, so I woke up early on Sunday morning. I was like, oh, maybe I'll get up and go get a Wii, right? Yeah. And then I said, you know what? I really want to do is play Super Mario Galaxy two in high def. Yes. And then I went to the Dolphin page, which is the Wii emulator, mm-hmm. and I started going down that path. And I was like, well, this actually isn't that hard. So I put the homebrew channel on my Wii, which took like five minutes in an yeah. SD card, yeah. which then allows me to install a thing that lets me rip d- Wii discs onto that same SD card. And then you take the SD card in and plug it into your computer and copy the ROM over, and you have Wii games running on, on Dolphin in the living room, in, right. in, in your, on your computer, right. which, because my computer is hooked up to the TV, I just went back in the other room. Use the Wii, the sensor bar that's plugged into the Wii, and was playing high def yeah. Galaxy Two yeah. in my living room off of the PC. Welcome to you know things that people have been doing for years. No, I know. I mean, it's not nothing new, but when I was thinking about buying a Wii U, that was I realized that's 
really what I wanted was I, the ability to yeah, play and think, Mario games in high depth. I think for the vast majority of people that aren't willing or able to, to go through all those steps, that you will see a lot of kind of HD remasters. Oh, they're going to sell all of those over again. So, look, if they bring out Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 HD collection, of course, I'm buying that shit. The, the bummer for me on that stuff, though, is the Wii channel. There's no reason that the Wii channel couldn't have just been running in high def. The, like if you run the Wii channel now, it drops you back down to 480p. Yeah, and I would like if if, if that had been an upscaled 1080p Wii channel, yeah. that would be great. Or even 720 sell you, sell it to you again. Well, they're, right, yeah, Nintendo's really good at selling you the same games you've bought ten times but, already. Uh, you know, I've said it a million times in the same way that as much as I used to like playing Wii games, I like I was constantly reminded of the fact that they were really low definition. It is wonderful to finally see these games in high def. Like Super yeah, Mario, Super Mario Bros. looks great. Looks fantastic, and I also love the ability to play stuff on the tablet. Like the playing, like when you we, when Gina's watching something on the big TV and I have headphones yeah. plugged into the, yeah. the game pad, yeah, and I'm playing Super Mario Brothers. It is the best game. It's the best handheld I've ever used. Oh, and also just for really simple things, like I, I had a bunch of friend requests or people uh, that I wanted to send to people who so want to start populating my yeah. friend list. Lee is watching TV, but I just pick up the game pad, power up the Wii onto the game pad screen. Went into Miiverse, sent a bunch of friend requests, put it back, and never interrupted the TV at all because the whole system is running through that screen. So how's your battery life been on the gamepad? I haven't used it for an extensive enough period to really test it. I, I haven't gotten the low battery. Seems like yet. three or four hours so for me. I think for like epic sessions, it's going to be a problem. The thing I did was plugged in the power brick behind my chair, and then I could just plug the, the uh, controller there in. You go. But a lot of the games require that kind cradle of weird is, movement on the is thing. nice, though. The, the, the 50 bucks for the cradle is almost worth it on itself. Yeah, the extra fifty bucks. What's that little just pl the plastic cradle thing that comes with it as well? Um, I think that's just a rest if you don't want to leave it. If you want to leave it plugged in, but don't want to use the cradle. Okay. And then the other one is to put the Wii up on its side. So I, I'm very mixed about Wii U right now. I kind of it, it's hard to predict because it is so different to anything that's been done before. I, I think but that, I, again, I applaud Nintendo so so much for doing something genuinely different for a second generation, really really different. And I do think there is tremendous, more so than the Wii Motion gimmick, I think there's tremendous game design potential. I think the, um, I think the like, launch lineup's pretty good. If you haven't been playing games in the last year, then the launch lineup's pretty awesome. Because you have Assassin's Creed is, is say, it's not a, it may not be the best Assassin's Creed ever, yeah. but it's still a pretty good game. And, and even little gimmicks, like when I was at uh, New York Comic Con uh, earlier this year, you know, I, did, I moderated the panel for Alien vs. Predator. Mm -hmm. Uh, not Alien vs. Colonial Marines. Uh, Colonial Marines. And somebody in that we were taking questions, and somebody said, "Are you going to do a Wii U version?" And they said, "Yeah, we don't know yet. Probably." And we're, we, I think maybe they said yes. They said we're looking at ways to use the Wii U. And I, like and if that's the motion I, tracker, I went motion tracker, and they went, yeah. "Ah, yes." Things like that just yeah. easily fit into that that paradigm. Um, the the. And I hope that it doesn't end up being a party game platform like the Wii ended up kind of at the I end. I think there will, there will certainly be a certain amount of party games. But I think I think there's much better potential for core games on this system than there was on the Wii. Yeah, assuming the hardware can keep up. I didn't notice. I mean, I obviously wasn't playing games that would have frame rate problems, but um, I, I'll, I think I'm going to buy uh, Zombie U, and I'm interested to see how that goes. I mean, the, the problem is that on a technical side, yeah. I wonder if they're going to wind up being the Wii again because... They're well, they're a generation behind. They've basically now finally, at the end of this generation, achieved technical parity. And according to all the teardowns and the specs that are out there, it's basically on a par with the 360 and the, and the, and the PS3. Really more the 360. The problem even. is we're, we're probably not much more than a year away from the next set of systems, which are going to be way, up, way oh, ahead. Yeah. How much are those going to cost? I don't know. Probably the same. Well, Microsoft and Sony aren't afraid of losing money. Or at least Microsoft isn't. And Sony's really good at it. Yes. <laughs> They're taking it out a whole new door. Um, yeah, I, I, it's like once they fix the UI problems, the core UI problems, I think it's a much more compelling experience. I think, I think it's going to be the same as the, I think it's gonna be the same as last gen in that Nintendo has a system that ten, when you look at what's up on the screen, the Nintendo system is probably going to look some ways behind whatever Microsoft and Sony will be offering in yeah. the next generation. But we, as always, Nintendo is going to be the only place to get these unique types of games that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the I think that's the important thing because realistically, no one is going to make games that require smart glass to play on Xbox because not everybody has tablets. And honestly, and, that and again, kills your thank God for Nintendo because if they weren't there, what would your choice really be? The choice between 360 and PlayStation Three. No, no, no. There's was. so little to choose from. It's iOS is a different experience, though. Having buttons and thumbsticks and stuff is important. Yeah, I mean, no, you talk about like big, you know, your, your classic console experience. You hook up to your TV. When it could, someone says to me like 360 or PS3, it's a really 
You have to go through a whole process with it to figure out well, well, no, it's what would where, be the best for Do that. you play multiplayer? If yes, where are your friends? If no, it doesn't matter. And also, uh, and it comes down to a handful of game types. First party exclusives. First party exclusives. Yeah. But technically, there's nothing, but no daylight between them. Right. But well, yeah. no, I mean, the PS... There are pros and cons to both on the technical side. It com- it, what it comes down to, the only, the only really d- d- differentiating points are, do you want Blu-ray... What's more important to you, Blu-ray or online multiplayer? Yeah. Because it's not just where your friends are. I think 360 still has a far better system for that, for, multi- for, for friends oh, yeah, and absolutely. social. Well, I mean, but, the, but you also have to pay for it, which is a big negative in a lot of people's that, books. That's also I true. I mean, so, so it is, and the, the 360 is probably technically inferior to the PS3, but it's also a lot easier to make games for, well, and the Unreal I mean, Engine on, works on, on it. On paper it might be, but I don't see many PS3 games that look better than 360 games. Well, the first party stuff is the stuff that looks better on PS3. Like Uncharted, which is targeted s- straight at right. PS3 hardware. Heavy that, Rain, those kinds Uncharted of things. Uncharted is probably the only game on PS3 that I can like, say, yeah, I kind of would have a hard time seeing the 360 pulling this off. Because the, un- the Uncharted games look amazing. Right. Well, and the problems that Unreal had with the Unreal Engine had with PS3 in the early part of the of the, of the generation, and even like through games like Skyrim, the PS3 version of Skyrim was just fucking broken. Yeah. So I, again, um, I, I I love originality. I think originality and, and risk taking should be re- always be rewarded. And I think what Nintendo is doing is just like last gen markedly different from what anyone else is doing. And I hope it works. And I do believe that there is more potential for developers to really get behind this system. that said if you're making buying recommendations today i think i would have a hard time recommending it based on the the performance of the course like i for the regular well, joe i would not for a regular yeah. joe i would not buy a wii u today yeah because there's not in, not enough games out there to make it worth it yeah yeah that's it it's okay. weird they don't even have like a weird a massive virtual console library in the store i was expecting people to go and buy new you know old wii games and yeah it really nothing. it, it, it kind of crazy it's cr- kind of crazy to me that the the wii shop stuff isn't all just in the eShop. Like uh, I totally was separate stunned shop. by that. And the virtual console stuff, apparently you have to boot into the Wii mode to play. You do. Wow. So that's all really weird. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Tesla. Or you went for a tes- Tesla yeah, I don't test. Spoil. Tesla's awesome car. Well, if you don't want to spoil it, why'd you put it on the list? I now know two awesome people car. who own a Tesla S. Oh. Okay. And I wish I was one of them. Yeah. Are you on the list? No. You, yeah. you can't. Go, if you order one now, you won't get it until next year. It's about a year. It's nine it's to 11 year. months. Yeah. That'll waiting sh- list. cut down as they yeah. go on. I, I, They're building at pretty much max capacity right now. I like to think that I, would, that I would get a Tesla at some point, but it's probably like a, a couple of generations away. From I would wait until the, the, tr- the charging stations are much more ubiquitous. Yes. There's only six of them in California. Yeah. yeah that's not good. But enough. you get free charging. It's so not there's good a free enough. trip to L.A. Well, so it just well, it, but you can't. But I couldn't do that trip in one shot. No, no. But the charging stations are they're two between here and LA. Oh, are they? So it's. A but then, trip. how long does it take to charge a battery? Uh, at the charging stations, an hour for the full battery. So you go and have lunch. It's in I and guess. out. I guess. Put in and out and top off. I'm very excited about it. So, Motor Trend Car of the Year, right? Tesla S. It is. Yeah, um, we talked about that last would week. Would you want to buy a Tesla, or would you want to see Tesla, you know, a Toyota with Tesla batteries and Tesla motors? I like the Tesla. So you want the premium experience? I don't know about that uh, that uh, UI. I don't know why they didn't do a deal with uh, Apple or Android just to get a, an Android. Uh, I think tablet, it is Android, yeah. isn't is it? Is it like a fork no. Android? It's based. It looks oh, right. it looks very tablety, but it but it's clearly some kind of custom interface. Yeah, and I've heard that it's kind of a janky. Yeah, uh, d- there there's some. I don't know why they didn't big touch put, targets. I don't know why they didn't just put Android in it. No, um, you know I don't want. I wouldn't want Android in it. I wouldn't have to. The, you have to download updates, but. I, I, wouldn't want to have to rely on the same build build a UI specific to your car. Um, do, so six charging stations. Does that count the stuff like in the Metreon where you can pull into electric car charging, or That's is that count. Tesla this is branded? This is Tesla, Tesla supercharged. Supercharge. Okay. Um, you want to talk about the Yoga Sum? Yeah, we talked about it enough. We'll the wait for a quick look. The laptop. Uh, we're gonna uh, shoot that next week, week after, I think. It'll be up before week Christmas. Week after. Okay. Um, I I spent some time with one two three D Design which is Autodesk's free 3D CAD program. It's like their version of SketchUp, kind of. I think it's a little... Uh, it's less limited and more... Li- it's less limited than free SketchUp, more limited than paid SketchUp, if that makes sense. But the neat thing about it is you can make something, and I did it all to mock up these shelves that I'm working on, and then I realized that you can actually um, print stuff from there. So you can export an S. So you upload it to their web su- website, web service thing, and then you can generate an STL file that you can just import into Makerware, whatever your 3D printer software is. So I printed the pieces of the shelves that I'm designing, um, so that I can put them all together in different ways and see how it works. And that is amazing. 
I, I mean, I've printed some stuff before using SketchUp, but it was always like a multi-stage process where you had to generate some stuff and then convert files, and then you had to end up with scale all jacked up or whatever. And and this was quite good. So um, one two three D design. It's on the App Store if you're on a Mac. You can just download it from their site if it's on micro if you're on Windows. Um, and and it's 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 the equivalent of like Pixelmator to Photoshop as to CAD or Maya or something like that. Like you can't do surfaces, you can do carved shapes, but with this you can also draw sketches and then create models on top of that if you want to do that. It's pretty cool. Uh, I definitely recommend checking it out if you are into that whole thing. Cool. And, or own a MakeBot. Yeah, and, and if you have a 3D printer, it's even more useful. Uh, I think you can also, if you don't own a 3D printer, you can also print to their kind of service. There's a couple of services that they work with that'll let you actually create the things. Shape ways or shape, something. Kind of like that, yeah. Um, I also got this thing. It's a Meta Watch. Gary, you should be interested in this. What is it? It is. It is. Remember the Pebble? I mean, I've heard of it. So. What is that e ink? No, it's a. This is a weird LCD. I think I can't remember. Um, but it's it's basically a phone connected watch. It uses the new stuff that's in iOS six or or uh, Android. So it'll if you text me, it pops up with the text message on the watch. Uh, you can Does run, it vibrate. Uh, it vibrates. Yeah. Somebody sent me an email last night and it vibrated like three times and it was really loud and obnoxious. Did, did it go for through? Do not disturb. I did because it was somebody when Adrian sent that email at like eleven o'clock. He's on the VIP list, which I think I'm I, I'm contemplating demoting him if so he's sending emails not, at eleven o'clock. Not three a.m. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So you can run. There's a handful of apps that run mostly. It's like stuff like weather, phone battery, um, calendar, uh, that kind of thing. You can control your MP3 player from it. This is the text instrument one. This is the, we we quick looked the predecessor the dev kit version of this last mm -hmm. year, um, but this was on um, what was it? It was on uh, it was on Kickstarter, right? The Meta Watch. That's where I got it. Um, How much was it? Hundred bucks, maybe hundred and fifty. I can't remember. Hundred fifty. I paid for it a long time ago, so it was free now. Um, the interesting thing about it is that they beat the Pebble to market, and Pebble was the big was the big massive success. Uh, on, on Kickstarter, they pre sold tons and tons of those. Uh, I am not convinced that the smartwatch is a thing that is of use. Uh, the way I want to do this, I want to use it for a couple of days, and I'm going to hand it off to you, and I want you to use it for a couple of days. All right. Um, how, how long is the charge? Uh, let's see. I charge. I have only charged it once. I charged it overnight. Phone battery is fully charged. It is. Hold on, I don't remember how to get to the phone. 64% in one day. It, it does it hit your phone battery pretty hard. Usually I end the day with my phone battery at about 60%, 65%, 55%, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. I was at 35 by the time I plugged it in last night. 180 bucks. 180 bucks. okay. I think it was a little cheaper on the Kickstarter because they gave us a starter deal. Um, but yeah, it's kind of bulky. It's, it's real big. I mean, it's chunky. Mm -hmm. It rides weird on your wrist. Um... The blue color probably wasn't my first choice, but I didn't want to pay more to get one of the better colors. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's interesting. I, like, it, when there are apps that you can put the stuff you want on the on the screen, maybe I'd be more interested in it. I kind of like... So the way you... The, the, the screen is divided into quadrants. You can put... Um, you can either have an app that fills the whole screen. So Some apps have full screen modes. You can have quarters or halves, vertical or horizontal halves. I kind of like that stuff. Um... Like last night, I was going to pick Gina up at the BART station, though, and it was dark, so it has to be. It's, there's no backlight on it, so you have to hit the button to turn the light on, which is the top left corner button. Um, and the font on the text message is so slow, so small that I like the idea is that you glance at it, you see what you need to know, and then you put it back down. The font's so small that you have to kind of squint at it, and and if it's dark, you have to keep pressing the light to turn the like, light on. I like this screen, whatever this whatever this LCD kind of. It's like a is, shiny like. LCD. Yeah, it's kind of shiny LCD. I like the concept, the meta watch thing. Yeah. We can just glance at whatever's going on. I like that too. This particular, this looks very cheap and plasticky to me. It well, it was cheap and plasticky. I mean, it's one hundred and fifty bucks, um, and it's huge. Yeah, it's light, not very good. I saw a. Uh, I saw it's a, it's fine in the dark. It looks bad in the daylight. I saw a tag. Uh, that I uh, in a watch in a jeweler store that I like the other day, and I was like, "Oh, that looks nice." And I wanted to ask the guy how much it was, and I walked out immediately. You did? Yeah. This is right. So I, he didn't even get to finish the price. I oh. just needed to hear the first two Ooh. syllables. How many? How many numbers yeah. after the all, dot? I, all I needed to hear was five thou, and I left. <laughs> 
<laughs> you didn't even get nope. the Zand part out. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Did it have diamonds or anything? Or was it just yeah, an expensive it's, ass it's watch? Just a really nice watch. Okay, there you go. Um, we also got the Kindle Fire 8.9 in. Uh, oh I've been yeah. Using that. That is a very good experience. Ah. Like I like. So, I, see, they, they got it right on the second try. So Norm Norm used the seven inch. Did the seven inch mm-hmm. testing. Um, I haven't spent a whole. I spent a little bit of time. Like Would you really minutes. get it over an iPad though? So I, well, uh, no. It's four hundred bucks instead of five hundred bucks. Okay. That's the for the for the the good one is four hundred bucks. Right. Um, I I don't know. I don't. I haven't. I haven't gotten that far into it yet. I haven't spent that much time. I'll with take it. a look at it before I leave. I yeah. It's it. it's um it's uh it's like they fixed the problems with the first one. Whether that makes a compelling tablet experience, I don't know. Okay. Um, and I guess that'll do it for what we've been testing. Anything else, Gary? Any kind of uh, seen on TV crap? You want to talk about games we've been playing separately, though, right? Let's do that later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's uh let's take a question or two and uh, and call it a show. Emails? Well, but we do the other one. Emails. It's, you know, we don't do emails. We do emails. emails. No, 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 no. Questions. Boom. If you have a question for This Is Only a Test, the email address is podcast at tested.com. Keep it short, under a minute. Uh, 45 seconds is even better. And make sure it sounds okay. Also, if you have questions for Adam, we're going to do a question podcast with uh, Still Untitled soon. So you can just email those in with text. We'll do dramatic readings of those. Um, and uh, send them to the same address with the subject line, questions for Adam. Or question for Adam, I guess. Uh, here is our first question. Hey lads, David here. Um, first some hometown trivia. My hometown, Malahide, is the same as the hometown of Adam Clayton and The Edge from U2. And also Brendan Gleeson lives here. So my question is that I would like a recommendation from you guys on what kind of graphics tablet to buy. Uh, my younger sister, she's 15, she's, you know, she's developing her skills as, as an artist and uh, she's actually quite good with pen and paper. But I feel like she'll need to learn how to use a graphics tablet now, sooner rather than later. So, if you could recommend something there, because I have no clue about that whole industry. Um, maybe something on slightly the cheaper side, because I am a broke student. Uh, so maybe something smaller or whatever. Uh, also, would you rather? Would you rather be fully submerged in urine or crude oil for half an hour? The rules are that you will not die from inhalation of fumes or whatever. It's purely which would you prefer. All right. I don't know anything about graphics tablets either. I know yeah. the Wacom is a thing. Yeah. Um, Brendan Gleeson's awesome. Yeah, I like Brendan Gleeson. Uh, oil. Crude oil. Oh, I'd take the urine. Crude uh, oil is super carcinogenic. Uh, flip a coin. You're not going to die or be affected by it. Ne- neither of them really. Both of those sound pretty awful. Like, I think both, they're both are awful. One came I guess from a I think. I think. Well, it could I come from an animal. Because you'd, at least you'd, you'd, you'd have not full freedom of movement. I think the oil yeah. is much more thicker and viscous. You'd feel more confined, if I it's think. 30 minutes? Close is the eyes, oil body temperature? Out. I don't know. I think you could probably float on the surface of the oil. Submerge. But, then you but I don't submerged. think you could submerge. I think you'd have to wait yourself to submerge. Yeah. That would be really scary. Yeah. I'd go with the urine. Total Full submersion? Are we wearing like a breath mask or something? Probably full submersion. Think of how hard it would be to get the oil off of you. The urine, at least, you can just wash off. Hop in the shower. It's all water-soluble. Soap up real good. You know what I don't think Scrub I could yourself do? Clean. Remember when those Chilean miners got rescued, and they went up in that little torpedo the tube? The death yes. tube, yeah. Oh, my God. That would have been terrifying. You can you stuck. imagine how awesome it would be to get in that tube after you've been underground for 30 days? I would. Every single person that I brought up, I would have stopped you halfway up just for 30 You're seconds. Just an to, asshole. Just, just for hoots. Oh, my God. No. Nah. Like make make some crackling stuck, noises. Because yeah, I mean, it took. I mean, what was it like? It took it's like, like 10, ten minutes to twenty one. minutes. Yeah. That, yeah. What a ten minutes that's got to be. When somebody I mean, rode up and down with them each time, right? Isn't what? That? No, they sent. They, one had, guy they, down. Had, to, they had to bring a guy down for. They had to, they, 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 imagine being that guy. Well, he went down to evaluate the health of the guys. I, but I think they. All, they. Mu- I'm pretty sure they must have sent that thing up and down. Just waited first, right? Just to see that the yeah, well, would go up and down the tube, the doors would open. Before they put a real person in. Yeah, and and um, they sent the doctor down to make sure that they'd fit. Like they, they, so once they discovered, they figured out how they were going to get them out, they had to have calisthenics and stuff so well, they lose weight. The if fat you guys. remember, they definitely did bring stuff because they did it as almost like a media surprise that when the guy came down, they already had set up camera gear. They presumably brought camera gear down there and the miners had set it up so that they could have live video. Or they sent it down the, they had a smaller hole that they could send food and that's stuff right, they, That's right. That's true. They had a secondary yeah. hole that equipment was going down. Yeah. Living like down the, that mine though. That was an amazing story. Has, there's a movie being made about that, right? Yeah. Just okay. an engineering and triumph of, of heroism. Human spirit. Smart. Yeah. I I want to see the stuff. I want to see the uh, the David Fincher version of that movie. But I just, all I know is like being in that 
being in that tube for like 10 minutes just terrifying the longest 10 minutes of your oh, life oh yeah awful um the Wacom, the Wacom bamboo stuff is the seems to be the consensus. We we tested one of those uh, like two years ago. They are relatively inexpensive, like under a hundred bucks. They don't have a screen. They do not have a screen. That's fine. But they're they're pressure sensitive tablets that you can use a stylus with Photoshop and a couple of other per, uh, applications. The thing I would say is figure out what application she uses for drawing, and then make sure that the tablet you buy supports that. Um, but the the Wacom pressure sensitivity. Uh, pressure sensitivity is super important. Having a two-sided pen is good. Now, the the levels of pressure sensitivity are where it gets expensive. So you can have like 10,000 or 500 or 128. Um, if you're starting out and you're going to buy something inexpensive, then you're probably not going to get... like That's where you're going to make the sacrifice and in the actual size of the writing area. Yeah. You should find out what... Uh, what uh Gabe uses a Penny Arcade. I mean, that's probably a. He more uses a Wacom Cintiq. Is the last okay. time I and saw. I'm that sure that's a very high end one. The screen. Yeah. 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 So that's a, what that is. Is a is a pressure sensitive drawing area on top of a LCD screen. Right. So he's not drawing onto a tablet and seeing it up here on his monitor. He's right. actually drawing onto like a live digital easel. Yeah. It like sits down below him, like right. like you would want your touchscreen PC to work. Right. Right. Um. But the thing you want to avoid is a typical capacitive touchscreen that works with your fingers, because those are not going to have the pressure sensitivity and the resolution that you want for drawing. Right. Um, that does it for questions this week. We only had one that was that I saw this week, so um, I guess that'll do it for us. Uh, Walking Dead episode five is out today. Yeah, well, it was out yesterday on PlayStation. Today, it's out on all formats. It's out on uh, uh, PSN, Xbox Live. Is it a Mac? Is there a Mac version now too? Yeah, on Steam. Was there a well, a bunch of different places. PC and Mac is out today, and uh, you can actually get an amazing deal on it on uh, at Steam. It's right fifteen now, bucks. Yeah. 12, 12 Ooh, wow, even better. The entire sale. series? 50% off for the whole series. That's oh, an wow. amazing value. Fantastic. Wow. And even iOS uh, is out today as well. Oh, so, awesome. Uh, they got all the all the versions out on the same day. And so right far, before Thanksgiving. So far, the reviews and the reactions have been very, very good. I don't know when I'm going to have time to play, but I'm really looking forward to it because everybody seems to have really nice things strong, to say. Strong, strong ending. I don't know. I've seen a lot of, I don't know how you're going to follow this up for the second seasons. That's that's a, that's a discussion that is going to have to be had <laughs> at some point, yes. Yes. Um, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of the show. Um, and if you're not in America, we're not going to have anything on the site uh, tomorrow and Friday, so good luck. The site's going to go shut down. Yeah, we're we're gonna go take a break. Going dark. Five oh four. Four oh four error. Sitting around. Yeah, we're just turning it off. Sitting around on couches, complaining about overeating and playing Super Mario Brothers. Mm. What yep. could be better? Uh, and then Monday. Surely that is what the what the Pilgrim Fathers intended. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into what is coming up on the site on Monday. There is high speed camera and pudding cups. That's Ooh, all I'm gonna say. That sounds good. Yeah. I like so pudding cups. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Today's outro comes from Fink. I haven't listened to this one, so I hope it's not super offensive, but it features Gary. Hi there, I didn't see you. That's it. Yeah, I fucking I, I, monster. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. I don't remember that. I don't remember. It's something about Cookie Monster. Uh, let's talk about video games. Yeah, we've been playing. I've been finally been catching up with some video games, and still yeah. behind. Again, as always, the problem, of course, this this time of year is all the best games. Boom, 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 come boom, out boom. For the Halo holiday 4, period, and you end up with Assassin's a backlog. Creed. This Assassin's week was a big Creed week for 3. PC. Yeah. I've been waiting for the PC version that just came out on Steam yesterday, so I haven't played it yet. I still haven't played Dishonored. Yeah, still haven't played XCOM. That's the, that's your big mistake. Hitman Absolution. I just downloaded yesterday. I might enjoy that. Did you like the other Hitman games? Uh, they seem like they might be a little bit tedious for you. The I'm going to try this new one. This new one's got some good reviews, so I'll try this new the, one. The last I'll one is one of my favorite games of the last generation. All right, well, I'll give it, it a try. Really uh, but I just spent the last few days uh, playing Black Ops 2 and loving it. Cod Blops 2? Cod Blops. Well, if you no, want to get something out of the way, low hanging fruit, Cod Blops is definitely Yeah, like four fruit. hours. I really like what they did with the campaign. Like, I have, not, yeah, I have been too. a known. I've been outspoken as not liking the campaigns of the Modern Warfare. Of the last couple of COD, blobs, COD, COD games. Yeah. And I think that the, the kind of... I feel like I have agency in that game in a way that I, I haven't in a long time. I like them really? all. I love the fact Just a that little boys, bit. I love the That's fact that Modern Warfare... It's a little bit of non-hallways. They've always... Yeah. They've always window. had these, window, look they've always the had these crazy over-the-top storylines. Like Russians invading New York City. That's the part I don't like. Insane. And I love all that madness. <laughs> well, then you might not like... Uh, I'm not going to like the end of you this. You might not huh? like where Blobs 2 goes because okay. it's on that level of madness. At least it's in the future. 
Like, I'm well, okay it, with it, it if it's an, in it's the an, future. I like it's a nice combination of like the old blops kind of 70s and yeah. 80s stuff and uh, the, the futuristic 2025 the, stuff. The thing that they did really well, the thing that I like this time is that I actually care about the characters in a way that I haven't in a COD game in a long time. Yeah, it's really? good. You I mean, care about soap? Soap is the only guy I care about. I love soap. I'm but I didn't I like, care. I like, you don't like Sergeant Price? I didn't care about oh. Soap and Price enough to play the third oh. Modern Warfare game. What? Oh, I love the third. The third Modern Warfare game was great. I, d- I hated the second one. I liked the... Oh, well, then when they invade America and all that nonsense. Oh, it was all that fun. Oh, it's so Ramirez, secure that, secure that burger town. The, so good. <laughs> so, okay, let me... A- so you finish it. Let me ask you a couple questions. Yeah. At the end... Is there like a Mexican standoff where somebody throws a gun to you or a knife or something? You have to shoot the bad guy just at the last second to save the world. There is something like that. Do you jump into the back of any helicopters just as something is exploding behind you? There is there things that were in Modern War. Everything that was in Modern Warfare One. I, all those things have been there, in all of these games. There is a there is a high frequency of jumping out of things right as they explode, which or is great. into things right as they explode. Right. Is there like there, a last minute getaway into a, a truck or there's, helicopter? There's a, there's a halo drop at the end, which is pretty okay. crazy. I guess we should have warned people that there's going to be maybe light spoilers. I don't think this is... I don't, yeah, I'm, I not, think, I'm not going to try to spoil too much. Okay. But uh, it's... I a, think this is worth playing. And I, I, I won't play the, the multiplayer two. because I can't survive in those games. I get they, Those games aren't noob friendly. The Modern Warfare card guys are too good for me. But I do like the campaign. It's relatively short. It's a good story. Completely over the top. You've got to suspend your disbelief, but it's oh, yeah. fun. Have you played multiplayer norm on this yet, or no? Not the new one? Yeah. I might play some Nuketown, because I, I liked Nuketown on the previous blops. Yeah. Uh, you just have to nice resign yourself. To to <laughs> making all, spend all the time in the games. So everyone plays the same old map over again. Yeah. yeah. They paid 60 bucks. Um, th- when you play multiplayer Call of Duty, you have to just resign yourself to dying a lot. And yeah, the goal I, is to kill not, people, kill one guy each time it's, you die. It's not fun for me. I like story. I like narrative. And yeah. again, even though they're very silly and outrageous, I like those storylines. And I think Blo- I think Blops 2 has the best campaign story mode of all the, yeah. the Call of Duty games so far. At least, really? it, well... I really like the first couple, but I feel like since Modern Warfare, it's the best one by far. So they, far. It's a little bit controversial in the way they've woven like real historical figures into the storyline. They did that last time, though, too, didn't they? Yeah, but it's a little, the way they do it in this new one's a little more so. Oh. You'll see. You'll get that. Um, I tried to kill Manuel Noriega, and I didn't, it wouldn't let me. I like shot, shot him, and he was invincible. I was sad. Yeah, they won't let you kill Noriega. I feel like you should be able to kill Noriega. Yeah, it's interesting to see David to. Petraeus in there. Oh, really? I haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, interesting to see uh, Colonel Oliver North. Like, all these great figures yeah. from American infamy are, uh, are in there. Huh. Um, and, and again, I, the, la- the last... There's two missions that are both in the 2025 uh, storyline uh, towards the end. One on an aircraft carrier, one in L.A., which are... The L.A. one in particular is fucking insane, and I Green. loved every minute of it. I'm yawning. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed so that immensely. So you finished that. Your question is what to play next. Yeah, Have you I finished th- Halo 4? I'm still working on Halo 4. It's pretty short. It's, it's, I would say I'm gonna, it's worth it'll, it'll be done by the Thanksgiving holiday. Yeah. Um, and I also want to play the Spartan Ops. because that's. I think I'll play Spartan Ops with you. Yeah, let's want. play Spartan Ops. Cause I want, okay. But I don't want to do it. I can't do it until I finish the campaign because I think Spartan Ops might It doesn't spoil anything. I played oh, most okay. of the first one. I mean, you see some, like, they play it on some of the maps that show up later in the game, but nothing All gets right, Let's try and do some, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish up the campaign by the weekend and we'll, let's, yeah, we'll just, do some we'll do You some know how to Spartan reach Ops. me. Yeah. Have your people call my people. And then I, I think next I've really got to do XCOM. You, dude, you, XCOM is the best game is of the year so far, I think. Not really. Um, it's the kind of thing. It's the kind of thing that you can sit down and play for twenty minutes. It's turn based, so if you need to get up and take care well, of the baby, uh, you can. Uh, so how how long the whole, to get the whole experience? It is as long as you want that campaign to be. If you the way the campaign is structured, there are campaign missions where the mission is to go in and kill all the aliens and rescue the humans or whatever, and then there's overarching story beats that only trigger when you do certain things inside the missions. So if you don't, if the if the scientist lady tells you to go do something and you don't get it done in the first mission, no bigs. You can do it on the next mission. The difficulty is going to ramp up as you as you progress down the trek tech tree, but you aren't punished if you don't hit those story those those story missions until a certain point. And by the way, just to go back to blocks. That's actually what I really liked. I love that they added that choice mechanism into. It's not even really a choice mechanism because you like a lot of time you don't know that you're doing something. Right, but there is there are branch the story branches and there are different versions yeah. of the of the story than you know like the how different. 
Uh, I think pro- I've only Entirely seen, I, I, I've only seen my what? ending but from talking like, to Jeff. It sounds like the endings can be pretty different. So I talked to Jeff about this because I was I was really curious. Like there are situations where a guy can get away, and that and if he shows up later in a later mission, that mission will be maybe more difficult, or something changes about the, but the there later are, on mission. I, I, this entire mission. I regret it. There are a couple, yeah, there are missions there are you won't co- see. There are a couple of choices that are very very clear. And one at the very end, and I actually regret the choice that I made. I may rewind that last mission and do it differently. So one of the things that happens is uh, it'll present you with a different kind of if you miss an objective you'll have to do another mission to to make up for that and then you can fail that mission so if you fail that then the difficult it'll be more difficult later something will change later you'll get a worse worse outcome Um, the the side missions the makeup missions I don't like at all I, maybe that I don't understand how to do them right, I'm or they don't the work well with the gamepad. I'm not a huge fan of those. The strike force missions are kind of crappy. The RTS element they added, it's cool that they did something new, Yeah, but I didn't love it. Oh, there's also a mission, an, another 2025 mission that's on. I, I, I can't spoil it. You'll, you'll, okay. When you get to the Colossus, you'll... Things will be cool. You'll appreciate okay. it. Okay. It's really cool. Um, you should play X-Force. Uh, XCOM. XCOM. I'm going to play XCOM, and then I don't know what after that. So Dishonored is uh, pretty good. The art in Dishonored is really gorgeous. I think the game is kind of... Eh. Yeah. So play Assassin's Creed instead of Dishonored or Hitman. I haven't played Assassin's Creed yet. I'm gonna. I I, I will work my way through all of these. I want to play Assassin's Creed and Hitman. And Scribblenauts s- came out yesterday too, and it's all Steam community connected, so people can build shit. I think. Well, apparently, and put it in the game. Apparently, the Wii U version of Scribblenauts is very good. I don't want to pay sixty bucks for Scribblenauts. It's fifteen dollars yeah. on Steam. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. And I still, God, there's so many other things that I haven't even played yet. I don't know how I'm gonna do. It. There's all these great indie games out there I haven't looked at yet. Have, did you play Fez? No, you should. Play and I Fez. have it too. I, I downloaded it. I haven't played it. Um, did you play Mark of the Ninja? I, same story. Mark of the Ninja is amazing. Yeah. Mark of the Ninja, like I think, I think, I think Dishonored is not as good as it is because I played Mark of the Ninja first, and two D stealth versus three D stealth is dramatically easier. I understand that, but it is it is such the perfect stealth game that I think even if you don't like stealth games, you'll like Mark of yeah, the Ninja. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I've got it on Steam. I'm definitely gonna play it. Um, it's a good living room game too. You can play it with your gamepad. Okay. Um, what else? Well, you got to play XCOM. Definitely yeah, that's, play XCOM. That's the, ne- the next one. Now that I'm done with Blops, uh, I'm going to finish up Halo. I'm pretty close to finishing up Halo 4. Is that this year's Skyrim? Blops? No, XCOM. You mean in, the chew in, in for game of the year? No, like, like everyone needs to play it, but also it, it takes as long as you want to spend in it. Um, it's a, it's a, in that sense, yes, it's, a complete, it's not at all an exploration y game. Like the, the th- it, it becomes a it's uh, XCOM is almost like a roguelike, so it's almost like you start a game, the game is your life, is 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 one life in a roguelike, and the the goal is to do the best you can on that lap of the game, like that's the way I've been playing XCOM, and and because of the way the mechanism the game works, as long as you save between missions, you can kind of put it down and come back whenever you want, and it's still just as good. Like it's you're telling the story of your XCOM dude saving the world from the alien menace. Um, uh, FTL is amazing if you haven't played that it's a kind of space roguelike I've played FTL um, uh, Spelunky I think is on sale on Xbox Live today for half price it's awesome but probably not for you Gary it's a little hard yeah I like um, easy games what difficulty play uh, Cod Bobs then? Recruit wow. I, I, I play everything on easy yeah, I, because I, I don't have the time I'm going to go ahead and tell you I've started doing that for things that aren't like I didn't play Dishonored on easy because it's a stealth game and I wanted to kind of force myself to to not just kill everyone yeah um, it's opposite of the Jeff uh, Greenway he plays everything on hard he wants to play everything for the actual shooting part for the actual gameplay no, I'm the opposite not, not the story opposite hmm well I, I, I can get challenged playing real people online and that challenge is more interesting to me there you go than trying to figure out an AI uh, I want more Mass Effect 3 multiplayer without all the bad microphones. By the way, I, sa- I sent you a, a game in Letterpress, and you never, never got uh, back to so me. So I made a mistake with Letterpress, and I asked people on Twitter if they wanted to play Letterpress with me, and I basically ruined the Letterpress for uh, myself. Yeah. I have too many games. I have like 35 or 40 and games. And I think I've also discovered, not a fatal, but a, there's a design flaw to it, where it all, all basically comes down to not wanting to be the second from last person to move. Uh, the important thing is... The important thing is being strategic about keeping a word. Like, if you can be the last move, being the last move is always good, obviously. Right. Um, so the trick is to make sure that the last two or three tiles are like F, J, and V, or yes. something that there's no words And you don't want to use one of those tiles and let the other person come in and lose the, right. the last two because it will right. swing back to them. Yeah, it's a problem. I had one game that went probably 65 or 70 turns because we were just, n- nobody would hit the last two tiles because it was like C and Z and Q 
right. there were no U's on the board. Yeah, it's also a bummer that when it gives you a Q, it doesn't also well, throw a U in. To there. be fair, there are like 25 words in the Scrabble dictionary that have Q but yes. no U yes, that are, are completely legal to use. Yes. You just have to know what those words are. But you should feel bad if you use them. I don't, I don't feel bad for using those. <laughs> QI. QI. Uh, QI. That's, why, that's why I stopped words with friends. People playing QI all fucking day. Yeah, QI is bullshit and words for friends. Um, but yeah, a lot people are saying this is a weak year for games, but I don't think we'd be having this conversation if it was. I, here's the thing is I think that there's fewer games overall, but the, ge- the high points are still as high as they have been. Like XCOM and the Fez fr- the b- look, the and big, Mark of the Ninja look, the big, are amazing. The big end of year games delivered, right? Assassin's Creed 3 seems like people like it. Halo 4 clearly delivered. Blops definitely delivered for me at least. Uh, you know, and then you know, there's a journey. Oh my God, that's the best game yeah. I've played. That, that's probably going to be, you know, obviously bias aside, is my that's my game of the year. Well, you can't make uh, you can't make Walking Dead, Walking Dead game of your well, game. No, of I, the year. I'm com- I'm conflicted there. By the way, it's very nice to see that other people are putting it in contention. It is. I have seen that a lot. That's very yeah. great. We've got two official. It's, it's one of my favorite games of the year. We have I two mean, official I'm, game I'm of the year nominations obviously. so far, and I think there will be more to come. Um, but um, I th- jer- p- for me, <coughs> Journey is my game of the year. <laughs> I think, and I would love to see a downloadable game win it and cross that. Well, this year, this year of the of my f- five or ten favorite games, two or three of them are downloadable. Fez, Fez Journey, Journey, Mark of the Ninja, Mark of the Ninja. Spelunky is high on that list. I don't think it'd make top five, but it's real good. Right. Um, so I'd like to see that happen. The other thing that ha- that we didn't get this year is last year we had kind of an embarrassment of riches with open world games because mm-hmm. we had Skyrim and Saints Row the Third and Assassin's Creed uh, Revelations was, wasn't actually that good. Yeah. Um, so there, like, I spent as much time playing Saints Row the Third and Skyrim as I spent playing everything else. So my far game this of the year last year was a tie, I believe, between <coughs> Saints Row the Third and Portal Two. Oh, Portal Two is pretty amazing. Yeah. That ending. Whew. Yeah, and I, and I, and I think and who I would have thought the moon? I'm in space. Yeah, I think this year, Spare. I think this year it's going to be Journey. I, I can't, I, I can't think of anything that would beat it. Mm. And I love, I love Blops. Like I really enjoyed that. Fez, Fez might hit you in the right way. Fez either hits you in the right way or it doesn't. Yeah, You're, it's a little puzzly for you maybe. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, for me these good. days, I'm more about like games as kind of emotional experiences, and Journey for me delivered just so, so much on that, on that idea. Yes, I got see, to I meet uh, Genova Chen. Oh, the really? Other day. I was a little bit starstruck to meet him. Uh, did you not know him from before? Never met him before. Oh, interesting. We finally, I was in LA and I got to have lunch with him. Wait, what did he do before? Because he did Flow, right? Was the first thing that they did? Uh, yeah, and then Flower, and then. And that, what did he do before that? Is that was that his first thing? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure know? what he did before that. Huh. Um, and I think it's a good, very good year in prospect for games as well. I'm really excited about The Last of Us. It's probably my most anticipated game right now. Yeah, I, I think GTA, GTA Five actually tied now that you, now that you mention it. Three three storylines. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think that'll GTA fix a lot of my problems with GTA. Like a lot of fun. Um, Love the GTA games. I'm gonna play the hell out of that. I'm excited about Last of Us because it fixes a lot of the things I don't like about Uncharted. It seems like like the, that setting and the choices they've made. Yeah, it looks tr- looks terrific. Again, I'm, l- I'm a little bit tired of post-apocalyptic scenarios at this point, but you know, it seems like they've got a good a good take on it. Gary Witta, Book of Eli. I'm a little tired of post-apocalyptic scenarios. Well, I mean, people wonder why uh, you know I don't just want to play zombie you either. I mean, I I can probably the last thing I need right now is fucking zombies in my leisure time. <laughs> the last thing. you've been walking around like a zombie for the last four months. You don't need any more zombies. Uh, yeah, in your exactly. Life. Um, we had so something else we were going to talk about too. I don't remember what it was. Uh, we were going to talk about hostess. Oh right, Twinkies. Uh, let's talk about. It. I I did I I did go out and buy. You made a mistake. A lot of hostess products. Well, that's a, that's a mistake anytime. Yeah. But there were people in line seeing all these hostess products going, why are you buying all these? I said, because they're going out of business. And they went, ran back and started clearing out the rest of what was back there. But yeah. didn't they do an about face? Aren't they back in business now because sales were so good well, this the pro- week? Look, the, the, the products were never going to go away. Somebody would have bought those yeah. brands. Yeah, Dolly but, Madison. But it sounds like, but it, 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 you know, obviously Little Debbie. Was, a huge shame for all the employees, but it sounds like they are maybe going to work it out now after all. So, well, the the, the the shit side of that story is that the executives have been giving themselves raises while they were negotiating uh, pay cuts to yeah. the workers, and, and, a, and that's horseshit. And a long succession of CEOs that had no experience or knew anything about baking. It's probably not a good I idea. Buy equipment. And yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody told me, or it was one of the things that's going around the internet. That again, it's not. It would have been no great loss in terms of the brands for a couple of reasons. First of all. As it turns out, Little Debbie make all this stuff as well. If you want... Very similar. And, but, and better. <laughs> yeah. Like, their versions of Twinkies, which are called Cloud Cakes, are superior. Except for and the And honestly, name. I went out and so we bought 
I bought some stuff and Leah had a twink and she's like, this is horrible. It's like, what? Why do we care if this stuff goes away? This stuff, it's not even good. Like on the weekends, I'm still on my low carb diet. I'm still, you know, keeping the weight off. I don't just eat what I want when I want. But on the yeah. weekends, if I want a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch for breakfast, fuck it, I'm having it. I allow myself. Right on. But if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna cheat, at least make it. Why would you eat something that's not even good? So, so like, I have a really nice piece of cake or a this is, really tasty donut. Don't, I don't eat a I don't, fucking I don't know why. That's why the zombie land that thing just didn't resonate. The twinkie yeah. thing. Well, but some people like some people genuinely like them, but they're not really that good. So, so the thing, the thing for me, the thing that I've realized is I have become more aware of what I eat. Is exactly what you said. I am all for eating something that's awesome and bad for you. It's got to be worth it. But, th- but if I'm going to eat something that's really fucking terrible for me, yeah. it had better be amazing. My, my local, my local market has a bakery that has like a, a deluxe kind of chocolate mousse tart thing. Yeah, it's so good that I don't care how. Bad it is Mendy or me. the other one? Uh, it's actually Andronico's. Oh, um, there's a bakery that's a pie milkshake. And even on, and, and, and even <laughs> in, in a cup. and even in the hostess world, like their orange cupcakes, I like those. Their cupcakes are all right. But again, if you're gonna have a cupcake, get a really good one. Well, the the other thing I found is that like they want it cheap. That's why people go to McDonald's. So I went on a on a candy kick at Halloween because those fucking kids didn't come take enough candy from us. Yeah. Um. Oh, by the way, talking of candy, I, there's a new. This is my. If you take one thing from this podcast. <laughs> One thing, take this. There is a new. Remember how we, how we ranked the M and M's the other day? Yeah. Yes. And we said it was like milk chocolate on the Pretzel. bottom. Pretzel was the king. Yeah. There's a new king in town. Wait, what? There's new king in town. What is it? It's a, it's a seasonal flavor. I don't think it can stick around. But for the holidays, white chocolate peppermint M and M's. Wrong. Are the shit. White chocolate is bad. Universally awful. Wrong. That is so wrong. White chocolate is the best chocolate. Garbage. It's the. It's not even chocolate. It's cocoa butter. If you tried these, you'd be like. Okay, I'm wrong. Peppermint mm. and white, white chocolate. chocolate it's peppermint. Too strong. So it's like peppermint bark, basically, but try, inside an M&M shell. Try them, and I guarantee. Mm. Pretzels are still pretzel M&Ms are still great. These are better. The thing I realized after after Thanksgiving after Halloween was, and I after I ate about 50 million Twixes, is I would rather have like a tiny bite of some really awesome dark chocolate than a fucking five Twixes. But a Twix is good. Twix is the best of the shit candy. Yeah. Yeah. Just no to be question. clear, I don't think it's shit candy. It's- I, I no, I, mean, I, would put, I would put Butterfinger up there. No. Butterfinger gets in your teeth too much. Mm. Rolos are pretty strong. I like a Rolo. Do yeah. like a you don't Rolo. like caramel. I don't like caramel. But you like Twix. Do I you like peanut butter Twix? Nope. But yeah, so mm. Leah, like, Leah likes the powdered donuts. The donuts? But again, if you're going to get a donut, go to, go to a donut. Like even go to Krispy Kreme. Even, even good donuts aren't that expensive. Go to a pink box place. Fucking A. Yeah, I like the pink ghetto box. Real, oh, I, I even like the, the, the ghetto like donut world place d- uh, down the street from me has a really good donut. That place is that place is not bad. It's just a donut shop. Yeah. There's a lot of cops there all the time. Yeah, though. but it's just like the, just the hostess donuts are just not good. Ho hos are all right. Are ho hos the black the black uh, chocolate like, cupcakes with the swirl on top? No, the squiggle. Uh, they're like the roll. It's I've like, never had those before. Cream in the middle. Yeah, cream in the middle of a of a, of a black so, roll. So, do you remember the Twinkie box from from the old whiskey office? Yeah, somebody sent you a lot of Twinkies. I had never had a Twinkie before that, I don't think. Yeah. And that box lived between Jeff and my desk about six feet back. And it was it was an incredibly damaging experience to have that kind of radio. Yeah, you don't want that many Twinkies, Twinkies on hand. Because it was essentially like 2,000 Twinkies might as well be infinite Twinkies. So immediately after I bought all those Hostess products, I'm like, well, what are we going to do with all these? Turns out they do actually have expiration dates. Yeah. So we've been giving it to anyone who comes over. When, da- when Darren came over to pick up that Wii U, that extra Wii U that I had, he also walked, walked out with like a bunch of Twinkies. Have a Wii U, take some Twinkies home. Yeah. Did you know there's a, there's a high school teacher who bought a Twinkie, a pa- two pack of Twinkies like 20 years ago. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, put it on top of his, like the speaker and his thing to see if they ever go bad. And he just retired. So he's passed that on to another teacher who was in the first class of students when he bought the original Twinkie. Yeah. It's an urban myth. They do go bad. They're good for about 25 days. It turned it really out. green and super gross. Yeah. 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 So yeah, sorry. Sorry, Woody. I'm so hungry that even a Twinkie sounds good to me right now. We'll see you guys next week. Happy, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes, everyone have a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And if you're not in America, well, have a nice Thursday.